Formula One on Five Live. Good morning, I'm Jenny Gow. We're on our own race across the world as we go to Japan. Yes, it's round four of the Formula One World Championship and Suzuka, a race that we all love for its passion, its people, its absolute place in the F1 calendar that is worthy of, I don't know, a front row, a headline, a box office. Harry Benjamin, I love this round so much I can't even find the words. I think everybody loves it. Uh, it's a fan favourite. It's a driver favourite. Um, the racing uh, can be good, but I think it's it's now, more of the on. spectacle of, uh, of Suzuka. No, we won't go there just yet. But we moved way earlier in the season uh, in April, earliest the Japanese Grand Prix has ever been uh, for, for two reasons, really, for uh, part of the sustainability grouping effort for the calendar, but also to try and avoid the rainy and the weather uh, for uh, the rain of the weather for later on in the year. And it is beautiful uh, in Suzuka right now. Blue skies, the cherry blossom in full bloom it's lovely it really is alice powell f1 expert alongside me they've even changed the inserts that go in around the drivers haven't they they it's, have it's blossom season they have i mean yesterday they had so jenny's on about the the padding that goes in the material of the headrest they have lots of different types and it's all to do with the the temperature so yesterday the air temperature was around about 16 to 17 degrees. It's now 22 degrees. Track is 40, whereas track yesterday was about 27. And we, we noticed this morning, didn't we, that uh, the pink head padding has been asked to put in the cars, which kind of means it's slightly warmer than it was yesterday. See, I think that's just a reference to the Sakura, the whole spring, lovely blossoms around. They've even put blossom trees, fake blossom trees, in the paddock and they've got wishes on them and each little ribbon hanging down from the Sakura is a little wish and some of them are really really nice and typically Japanese if you understand that it's like please go well George or all of those nice things that you say about people did you know that there are 226 varieties of cherry blossom tree I did not yeah, yeah. can you name them please uh, well we'd be here all day but, Can you name one of them? What's your most uh, favourite? There is the, the, the standard <laughs> cherry blossom tree. Uh, it's probably my favourite, <laughs> I would say. Probably my favourite. That is a total get out. OK, let's talk you through the grid. Harry Benjamin, who is on pole? Uh, it'll come as no shock that Max Verstappen is on pole position. It's a Red Bull lockout. And uh, Max Verstappen certainly uh, back to make a point after, of course, his uh, retirement last time out in Melbourne. But he starts on pole and he's kind of looked dominant from the very beginning of the weekend. Oh, do you want to run through the rest of the Oh, you want me to see the whole, oh, yeah, I'll do the whole grid? Yeah, come on, give us are. a yeah, treat. Yeah. Oh, well, it's Perez, uh, front row lockout. Lando Norris, best of the rest behind in third uh, for McLaren. Carlos Sainz and Fernando Alonso, the two Spanish drivers, round out the top five. Piastri, Hamilton in seventh, saying um, the Merck is the nicest it's felt in three years. Wow. Uh, so that's saying something, and he's only qualified seventh. In front of Leclerc, disappointed with that. Russell and Sonoda, the home hero, rounds out the top ten. Uh, just pipped Ricardo, who looks to be a little closer to his teammate this time around. Hulkenberg, Bottas. Albon and Ocon, the top 15. Then it's Stroll, Gasly, Magnussen, Sargent and Joe. Uh, 20th and last. And Joe has uh, had quite the overhaul with his car overnight in Park Ferme. Uh, had a technical issue in FP3 as well. So uh, Sauber and Joe hoping to, uh, uh, those changes, uh, make him uh, get off the back of the grid. 10 minutes until race start. Hopefully you've got a butty by your side and maybe a cup of coffee or tea. Let us know. Hashtag BBC F1. How are you listening to this race? And while you're doing that, Let's listen to Max Verstappen. Hey, and Max, incredible lap yesterday to take pole position. How satisfying was it on one of the great tracks on the Formula One calendar? Yeah, it's, it's always, you know, amazing to, uh, to drive around here, especially in qualifying, you know, the car really comes alive. Um, so, uh, yeah, looking forward to today now. It's good weather today, a bit more sunny. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can, uh, yeah, make it a positive result for, for the whole team. You've got your teammate alongside you, you've got a McLaren and a Ferrari behind you. It feels like the gap shut a little bit. How are you feeling about keeping them all behind today? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we made a few changes to the car before qualifying that hopefully will help a bit for, for today and then normally we should we, we should look a bit better. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. You know, it's always um, a demanding track for, for tyre wear and, and stuff. So, um, yeah, hopefully we did the right thing. And a huge support here for Red Bull, for Honda. What is the crowd like for you when you're experiencing this kind of support? Yeah, it's always super nice to be here in Japan. You know, they're always super friendly, uh, very supportive to, towards us. So, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we can give them a great race. Great stuff. Best of luck today, Max. Thank you. 
So Verstappen, no surprise, as you say, starts on pole and he'll look to defend that as he has done for the last two years. Could anyone challenge him apart from reliability? Um, well, well, that's the question, isn't it? I think if Verstappen gets a, a clean getaway, then uh, he'll be off and away and, and Perez will be keen to cement uh, in second. Perez will have the better line. He could sling a nose down the inside, but Perez wants to keep on to that Red Bull seat, so I'm not sure he'll put too much of a fuss. So then all eyes go uh, to Lando Norris in the McLaren. If he can get a blinding start, which Norris can do. If you think back to uh, several occasions last year, uh, the Silverstone last year, yes, he was on the front row on that occasion, but he got a great start and actually got ahead of Verstappen going into turn one. So if Norris can get a good start, get in front of Perez, then I think Norris will try and keep Verstappen within his sights early doors, but eventually the writing will be on the wall. I can't see anyone beating Verstappen. Alice, a lot of Mexican fans have made their trip across to Japan, or maybe they're just Japanese and they're supporting Perez, but has he got a hope this weekend? He, I mean, he's done well to get himself onto the front row and be that supporting factor for Red Bull. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be tough to beat Max, to be honest with you. Max, uh, if you look at the data, did uh, sort of not get it together in the final sector yesterday. And Max has even said that, that it wasn't ideal. The tyres sort of went away from him in the final sector. So he could have potentially been slightly further ahead. But still a great lap from Sergio to get himself on the front row. Very close, you know, a bl not even a blink of an eye between uh, the two of them so he'll be hoping I, I'm kind of going a slightly different direction compared to Harry I think that he will try and go down the inside Ooh, of I like Max this. because why he, not yeah I, I think Sergio <laughs> of course he's, he's going to think about that Red Bull seat but you know this you want to win he's a racing driver he's not going to he's got to a stage in his career that you know maybe it was his early career he'd sit there and go okay yeah maybe I'll uh, I'll sit and wait but now He's got plenty, plenty of races under his belt, under pressure. He wants a result more for him than anything else. Sun is beaming down on the grid, and actually a lot of the teams have got umbrellas hovering over their drivers. One of those is Lando Norris. His start's third. Let's hear from him. Lando, it was a strong qualifying result for you yesterday. Fantastic result for you last year here. How good are you feeling about a repeat? Um, feeling good. I think it'll be a little bit more difficult to achieve than last year. I think even a second place is going to be more tricky, but I'm excited. I'm feeling good. It's a lovely day. Um, hopefully you can have some good racing and have a fun race. And do you feel that you are in the battle with Red Bull or is it a case of maintaining and defending? I mean, if I can get one at the start, that will be a lovely help. But um, it's still clear they're quite a bit quicker. I'm sure their race pace is going to be better. but. You know, we were not miles away last year and we were further off. We had you know, our worst car last year and we were not miles off in the race. So you never know. We've not done any long running stuff. So there's a lot of unanswered questions for us to figure out today. So uh, we're going in with an open mind and um, we'll be giving it our all. And how great is it just to be here in Suzuka with all these incredible fans? It's always great. I look forward to it every year. It's my, my favorite, I wouldn't say my favorite weekend because that's Silverstone, but probably right behind that is, uh, is Suzuka here. So. Always great. The fans are lovely. Plenty of gifts. And um, yeah, it's always exciting. So uh, a pleasure. And I hope we can put on a good race for them. Thank so, you very much. Good luck today. That's Norris on the second row of the grid alongside Carlos Sainz and Ferrari. Have good race pace. They'll be hoping for a lot. Um, let's hear from local man, though. Yuki Tsunoda, Japanese. And he's just had the national anthem and he's had to stand right at the front of the grid. And I, I'm sure that's a show of, uh, of honour and pride. But for me... I'd find that excruciating. Anyway, let's listen to Yuki. Yuki, you've been quick all weekend long. You've delighted the crowd out here. Just how satisfied are you with what the weekend's turned out to be so far? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, amazing for us um, as a team. You know, Daniel finished P11 and for me P10. And, you know, we lined up very close to the point. So, yeah, very optimistic. And, you know, I felt already last two days, amount of crowds that supporting me and, the amount of energy I got was uh, definitely special, so, you know, can't wait to hit on track today. Um, definitely the points will be to target, uh, never achieved, so, you know, but I'm sure with the pace, what we have now, uh, it's very, very realistic. You look so comfortable at the car at the moment, you're operating at such a high level. What would it mean to score those points and home soil and send this crowd crazy at the end of the race? Yeah, I know, it's uh, definitely one of my 
big wish wish list. Um, yeah, it's the last two years. I mean, last year I was able to go through Q3, but you know, didn't able to score points. And you know, the points is for us, and especially for me, it's a big meaning. Um, obviously, in the future, if I can if I can get podiums or you know even the you know Grand Prix win, you know that would be great. But I think first step we need their points. And uh, yeah, top ten already. You know, massive support I got yesterday when I went through Q3. You know, the amount of support. And the noise I heard from the grandson everywhere was, um, I don't know, just uh, outstanding, you know. So hopefully I can hear more or pro more. That would be great. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we can do it. Yeah. Great stuff, Yuki. Thank you very much. Good luck today. That's Yuki Tsunoda speaking to Lawrence Barreto. He starts P10. And looking at the top 10, it's a really close grid. If you take out the Red Bulls, Alice, is there any chance that someone's going to do something wacky on strategy? There's a, a, I think there's a, there's room for it. I mean, yeah, you'd opt to to start possibly if you're further up on the medium tide just to be safe. I'm actually surprised that Lando Norris has not started on the soft, to be honest, because he that would give you a better launch going down into the first corner uh, off the start. But Fernando Alonso has decided he's going to go for it. He's going to try and make Feisty. this jump. Yeah, he's starting on the soft. That just gives you better traction and, and better launch off the line. However, of course, the soft tides don't last as long. Uh, estimated if you're starting on the soft you'll probably box that's to come into the pit and change your tyres around lap 8 lap 15 possibly uh, but if you're starting on the mediums of course they go slightly long, longer so anything from around about lap 21 to, to 24 I love it. Um, hashtag BBCF1 if you want to get in touch. Carrie's got in touch saying she's eating the last bags of mini eggs this morning. That's power, oh, isn't nice. it? Um, a lot of you getting in touch saying you're working as well. We feel your pain. Codex 09 Gaming. Um, I'm excited, Harry. Are you? Yes, I'm looking forward to it. I think it is going to be a race that is dictated by uh, tyre, deg and strategy. Uh, that is certainly going to be one uh, to look out for. Um, that, that soft, the high, highest soft starter is Alonso. I think, as you say, that's going to be really exciting to see if he can try and cause some trouble uh, and get some speed early doors. But uh, looking forward to this one. Let's see what happens going down into turn one. Yeah, it's a stretched out of turn one, just under 300 metres. I think a lot is going to happen in the first moments of this Grand Prix and hopefully they keep the excitement going for the whole time. So I'm Jenny Gow alongside me, Alice Powell, and your race commentator, Harry Benjamin. Thank you very much, Jenny. We're just about set then for round four of the 2024 Formula One season. 53 laps ahead of us around this iconic Suzuka circuit. Max Verstappen, once again, the man to beat. It's time for the Japanese Grand Prix. His fourth pole of the season, Max Verstappen leads a 1-2 lockout for Sergio Perez in second and on the front row. Lando Norris in third for the McLaren. Sainz and Alonso round out the top five. Then it's Piastri in sixth ahead of Hamilton, Leclerc, Russell and Sonoda. The home hero rounds out the top ten. Daniel Ricciardo in 11th in front of Nico Hülkenberg in the Haas. Then it's Bottas, Albon and Ocon, the top 15. Lance Stroll is 16th in the Aston Martin ahead of Gasly, Magnussen, Sargent and Joe Guan new lines up 20th and last in his salva. Formation lap underway then as the 20 drivers make their way around this 5.8 kilometer, just over 3.6 mile circuit, 18 turns, 10 to the right, 8 to the left. The sun is beaming down on this Suzuka circuit. Absolutely no chance of rain. And it is going to be all about your start. Track position is very crucial around here. Overtakes can happen, but it is difficult, Alice, isn't it? DRS will be activated, of course, after a lap. 
How important is that going to be to try and keep the Stappen in sight for Perez, Norris, who are starting right behind him? Yeah, really important. You know, it's going to help Perez if he can stay within uh, DRS of the Stappen because it will help him sort of pull him along and maybe draw him out of grasp of Lando Norris. I've just had a little think to myself here uh, while you? we listen to that chain. Yeah, believe it or not. Uh, I think Lando, maybe, if he's not opting of, uh, to, to start sort of on the soft tyre, uh, I don't think he actually has that available anyway. But if he did have, I think hearing from him before uh, the race, it seems like he's just settling for, for third. Uh, he thinks that, that those Red Bulls are, are out of his reach today. But, uh, but who knows, Harry, on that run down to turn one. Who knows, they're just coming onto the grid now. Almost 230,000 fans gracing the Suzuka circuit across the weekend, witnessing a race about to unfold that we think is going to be all about tyres, Jenny. Yes, and the top 10 all choose to go off on the mediums, apart from Feisty Fernando. Alonso chooses a soft and will to hope to get a jump off the start. He starts P5. Yeah, he'll be the highest soft starter. Then it's mediums all the way down to Hulkenberg uh, in 12th. Uh, the back rope will be Logan Sargent and Joe Guanyu in the Williams and the Sauber, respectively, as the front row now begins to fill up. Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez then having to wait while the rest of the cars line up in their spots, expecting at least a two-stop strategy. The grandstands are absolutely packed out. Thoughts going down into turn one, Alice, as Joe Guanyu comes onto the grid. Yeah, you need to get a good launch here. You don't want to slip back because it is hard to, to overtake. Yuki Tsunoda, he'll want to keep out of trouble. So will all the drivers, of course, but it's not so easy on that tight run down to turn one as the rest of the drivers now, uh, at the tail end of the field, are, are coming up to the grid. Ahead of this race, Max Verstappen and Red Bull both at the top of the drivers and constructors standings with a four-point lead. And following us will be all the latest sport and news on BBC Radio 5 Live Breakfast. But right now, it's time for the Japanese Grand Prix. Max Verstappen on pole position. It's all eyes to the lights and foot to the floor as we go racing. Good start from Verstappen, who slots in ahead of Perez. Down through turn one. It's signed down the inside, though. Lando Norris coming into turn one, trying to get a look for third place. Carlos Sainz, fast charging on the soft compound of tyres, tries it on the Ferrari, who can't make it through. It's Verstappen who leads, Perez, Norris, then Sainz, then Alonso, but we've got a big crash early doors. It's involving the Williams of Alex Albon, who finds himself lodged into the tyre barrier, coming through, turns one and two, yellow flag out. It's Verstappen who leads, Perez, Norris, Sainz, Alonso, the top five, Piastri, Hamilton, Leclerc, Russell, and Hulkenberg with a great start up into the top 10, and immediately Alice Powell, we've got a red flag for that crash involving Alex Albon and we think as well Daniel Ricciardo in the RB. Yeah that's a big hit into the tyres. Out of the car is Daniel Ricciardo. I think Alex Albon is just blocked by advertising balls trying to get out of the, the car there but we'll, we'll, we'll keep you updated. A lot of the drivers had to stamp on the brakes. They actually caught the red flag through, through the Degners and uh, the tyre temperatures aren't fully up to speed and when you're having to lift through that amount of load it can unsettle the car a lot so well done to all the drivers there who uh, managed to avoid each other some of them scarped, scattered around to uh, over the curbs to avoid each other uh, Alex Albon has come over the radio and said that he is okay, just those advertising boards that the medical team have moved uh, to allow him to get out of the car. And as you can hear, a uh, big round of applause from the, the, the fans in the, crowd, in the grandstands as well. Yeah, frustrating then though for Daniel Ricciardo in the RB and Alex Albon the Williams, who we've just seen clambering out of uh, that car. Red flag early doors, Jenny Gow. Interestingly, just looking at the debris that's fallen, it looks like they've crashed into those tyres and they're meant to absorb, but the whole tyres have shifted and wrapped themselves around um, that Williams, so the tyres actually fell on top, it looks like, of, of the car. That's un unusual. Well, we're just getting another look at the race start. It was a, a nice clean start from the front row. Uh, Verstappen and Perez having a, a smooth time of it as we cast our eyes to the back of the pack. And 
let's see what happens as they go through turns one and two, all seemingly fine. Albon behind the RB of uh, Ricardo as they make their way out through turn two, and it looks like Albon has gone into the back of Ricardo as they make their way into the left-hander approaching turn three, and that's spun them both off into the gravel, Alice. So we said about it being really narrow there, didn't we? Uh, we're just going to catch an onboard of uh, from Alex Albon's point of view, but what it looks like is the two RBs got a dreadful start, really disappointing start from, from those two. Actually, both nearly made contact going into turn one, and Alex Albon, he's got a better run out of turn two, goes to the right-hand side of Daniel Ricciardo, who clearly has no idea he's there, and uh, they just clip immediately. Daniel Ricciardo's got a puncture. Just squeeze me. Nowhere to go. I agree with, with Albon. He was squeezed, but I don't think Daniel Ricciardo had any intention of, of doing that on purpose. I genuinely don't think he actually saw him. So riding on board now with Daniel Ricciardo, you can hear he got that wheel spin. Yuki Tsunoda dives down the inside because he also got a dreadful start. Then Daniel Ricciardo is going to have a car to his left-hand side. I'm sure what car it is. And yeah, I just don't think it wasn't really him being very aware to be honest. You have got blind spots. These mirrors are extremely small. So maybe he was, uh, Alex Albon maybe was in Daniel Ricciardo's blind spot, but Daniel Ricciardo was kind of sort of just floating in the middle of the road. But uh, yeah, we'll have to obviously hear from both drivers on board with Lance Stroll. So he was the car on the left-hand side. Uh, I, Looking at that, there was room for Daniel Ricciardo to go to the left and, and almost, you could say, squeeze Lance Stroll. And he just drifted over to his normal racing line, did, did Ricardo. Uh, I don't think he knew Albon was there looking at that. Well, that has brought out the red flag straight away. And Daniel Ricciardo in the RB and Alex Albon on the Williams, both out of their cars, walking away. The uh, medical team straight over with them and checking they're all right. And a little nod of the head from Ricciardo uh, to the medical delegate as he got out of the car. But frustrating start. I think both those RBs got really bad starts, which ultimately led to, to them being in that position. They were on the median tyre and all the soft runners behind them just absolutely overtook them. But that Williams car in particular just being hoisted up now uh, by the uh, the digger has got a lot of damage to it and of course this is off the back of Melbourne where they had the, the the chassis issue between the two drivers a lack of spare parts in general for that team uh, at RB that car also suffering damage Jenny this is the it was the last thing any car or team wants but when you're a team like Williams especially where you're you, you know financially under the cost cap as well trying to think about that and publicly saying you're down on spare parts a huge shunt into turn one is not good news for Albon or Williams I think you couldn't ask for two teams that didn't need that crash more than Daniel Ricciardo in the RB and as you say the Williams I don't know what this is going to do I mean until they've got that car back and had a good look at it they don't know how and the extent of the damage that has done to that chassis they don't have another one. They don't have it ready. They won't have it ready for the next race in China in two weeks. They will have it ready for Miami if if they can get back on track. But if all the resources going into fixing the other chassis now, which was the new sh 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 chassis, that's really difficult to say. Sergeant was running the old one. This is the newer one. Then, yeah, that's really difficult for the team. And just on Daniel Ricciardo, Everyone thought yesterday, oh, that's good. He's closed the gap a little bit. Okay, he's not as fast as his teammate, but there was only, what, a tenth in it or something? It was a very, very small amount. Um, and this was the, exactly what he didn't need. A heavy crash, not particularly his fault, I'd say. Just, in, uh, I mean, it, would it be a racing incident? It will, that yeah, one? it will go down 100% as a, as a racing incident. You know, it's he didn't do it on purpose. I just genuinely don't think he actually saw... Uh, saw that Alex Albon w was there. But he needed this, didn't he? He needed a good race this weekend, and that's that's going to take away once again from the kind of momentum that he was hoping to get. 100% needed a, a good result, and just looking at the damage on that Williams, I mean, they didn't actually go into the tyre barriers that quickly. Um, okay, it's quicker than you would like to go into a tyre barrier, of course, but uh, it did sort of obliterate the tyre barriers so maybe that's something that the circuit will uh, have to have a little look at because if, you, if someone went in there at much higher speed, I think it would do, do quite a bit of damage. 
Can I ask a really silly question? Go for it. It's my speciality. <laughs> what does it feel like to crash into tyres? Um, oh gosh, I've never really thought. What does what does this feel like? It, well, I tell you, if you're hitting, I it, thought you were going to say, "Gosh, I've never done that." Oh, of course, if you haven't hit a tyre barrier <laughs> as a racing driver, you're not going. You're not trying hard enough. Um, if uh, it depends on how you hit. You always tell younger drivers that are coming up through through the ranks to make sure you take your hands off the wheel. If you know you're you're going to have an accident and the front axle is gonna is gonna hit, even potentially if it's not necessarily the front axle going in first, remove your hands because when you hit that barrier, the wheel can snap round. Luckily, I've always remembered to take my hands off the wheel but I know some drivers that have broken thumbs from not doing it Daniel Ricciardo uh, Ricciardo is one of those of, of course as we're just catching another replay uh, of, of the incident your head can get bashed about a little bit on the on the headrest so sometimes you get, come away with a little bit of a, a headache uh, headrest can get slightly cracked but I've never gone into a tie brown and think Oh, this 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 hurts. Luckily, I've I've always been okay. You just you just think this is not what I need, you know. Especially if there's an incident, it's not your fault. Like Alex Albon, he'll be frustrated, angry. But if it is your fault, I mean, let's think of who do who we have this weekend. Sergeant going off at the Dunlop curve into the tyre barriers. You're just thinking this is not what I need. What am I doing? You know, like, how did that happen? What am I doing? The tyre barriers are so good these days, they really do absorb a lot of the impact. So it's very rarely that you'll get sort of, you know, your breath will get taken away and stuff like that. But it's just more the huge sheer disappointment of, of having an accident and, and going off and losing the chance, like Daniel Ricciardo, like Alex Albon, to score points, to, to get a good result for the team. And I always think about uh, the mechanics and what they've got to do to, to repair. That's because you're a nice person. Well, and I've also done, when I wasn't racing for a little bit, I went and did sort of wheel washing and stuff like that just to try and earn some, some pocket money back in the day, many years ago. And I know what it's like if a car goes off and you're there till real early hours uh, of, of the morning fixing a car and then you're back at circuit again. Okay, this is a Sunday, so they're not going to be early. They're not going to be sort of coming back to the track the next day. But these, these will have to travel back home it's a long flight from, from Japan I've certainly never done it I know both of you have and uh, could probably definitely agree that it's a, a, a long flight and that's what people don't understand it's the hours that get put in behind the scenes by the mechanics by the engineers by every single one a person that is at that circuit working uh, in the team such long hours and then having an accident that just makes those hours even longer that's the voice of racing driver Alice Powell alongside Jenny Gow and myself, Harry Benjamin. You're listening to BBC Radio 5 Live coverage of the Japanese Grand Prix and, uh, well, three corners into this race. A big crash involving the RV of Daniel Ricciardo and the Williams of Alex Albon coming together and uh, off into the tyre barrier, bringing out an immediate red flag. And now the 18 remaining drivers in this race are now uh, back into the pit lane and all out of their cars and uh, helmets off in the garages, chatting to their engineers and just sitting and waiting, keeping their game faces on. Verstappen led away uh, on the initial start. Perez slotted into second. Norris signs Alonso the top five. Piastri, Hamilton, Leclerc, Russell, Hulkenberg with a fast charging start to get himself up to 10th in the Haas ahead of Bottas, Sonoda, Ocon, Gasly, Stroll the top 15, then Magnussen, Sargent and Joe, the 18 remaining drivers with now no Ricardo or no album uh, now what happens here Alice we're under red flag conditions and we've been talking a lot about tires as well coming into this race and of course under a red flag condition you are technically allowed a, a, a free change of tire without having to uh, take any kind of hit for it you are but I doubt at this stage after well technically we've done two laps uh, we'll see any drivers opt to to change unless you know, maybe they've had contact somewhere along the line and there's a slight puncture or, or damage. Um, the incident, of course, by Albon and Ricardo is, is noted. So FI stewards will investigate that. But, uh, yeah, I can't see anyone making any, any changes of the drivers now at this point. As you said, Harry will sort of be in the garage, chilling out, 
Some big movers, though. Hulkenberg, he got a, a good start, so I'm just looking through, gained a couple of places up into to 10th. Uh, question on hashtag BBCF1 from Emma. There was a, a lot of damage to that tyre barrier. Now, the FIA have just confirmed that we will get a standing restart, but how long will it take to sort that tyre wall out? It certainly looked like it, looked like it took a lot of damage. It did, I would say. I mean, we've not seen some, some pictures uh, recent pictures but the marshals of course do a fantastic job hugely experienced marshals that come along to to these Grand Prix. I would like to say, I mean don't quote me on it but 20 minutes I reckon there we go, 20 minutes or so so you've got That's enough bold. time to go make a, another cup of tea, cup of coffee, get your porridge Do you know what, there's outrage on BBC um, F1, hashtag BBC F1, people have got up early looking forward to the race Leclerc Radio. So there was a crash at turn three. Ricciardo and Albon. Everybody okay? Both of them are okay. Leclerc on the radio. We're about to get a little bit of a montage of uh, the radio messages post crash and in the build up. Sonoda's up next. Is he okay? I'll, uh, I'll let you know when I know. Yeah, he's out. That was Sonoda on the radio, the home hero. Poor start for him, down in 12th at the moment. Verstappen next. Is uh, everyone OK? Yes, uh, Daniel's out of the car, Max. He's all OK. OK. What about Alex? That was uh, John Piero Lambayese. Max's engineer confirming how uh, the drivers were. And... Uh, Verstappen now back in the garage, looking rather relaxed. The, uh, a towel wrapped around his neck, sat down next to Dr. Helmut Marco, the motorsport advisor to Red Bull. And another thing to point out, um, if we look back to the end of the Australian Grand Prix, where George Russell had that huge shunt coming into the right-hander of turn six, and the car actually ended up sort of almost on its side in the middle of the track, there wasn't a red flag. But here, the red flag has been brought out immediately straight away for two cars that are off track and, and in the wall. I suppose, what are, the, what are the differences there, Alice? Why was there not a red flag for, for Russell, but there is one for this incident? Now, that's a good question. And one that's difficult to answer. Is it because I, I this is lap know. one and the other one was well, the I last think lap? Well, potentially, I mean, Russell was in it. I, when I saw Russell's accident I was just hoping and praying that no one was going to come flying around that corner because that would have been a really nasty accident obviously they had the virtual safety car which slowed everybody down this potentially uh, incident we've got now could be just the tyre barrier damage I'm, I know uh, Jeddah where they've done re repairs whilst uh, it's going on but that's slightly different they're, they're different type of barriers there at, at Jeddah these tyres tires have literally haven't they they've just scattered everywhere so um i think they've they've fought for for the fans and for the racing point of view it's best that we immediately red flag this race to sort it all out for me as well i think lap one when you've got a big crash like that and it was a fast corner i mean the corners at suzuka are fast they're dangerous they're high speed and when you've got those cars moving around in a procession like you do at the start of a race trying to overtake trying to battle and with the history that Suzuka has, with, of course, the accident that ha happened 10 years ago with Jules Bianchi and the memories of that, they will always be fresh in my mind. I don't know about everyone else, but it's, it's an instant red flag for me. Two vehicles at high speed, you don't know what's happened to them. It might not be that you can get that extraction out quickly. It took a while for them to get Alban out. You don't want people trying to get out of a car that's damaged at high speed when the race is still on. For me, that's just a, a no-brainer. And, and the last one, they had the virtual safety car, but everyone was on the radio saying there's been an incident, watch out. And I think if you listen back to the radio to the drivers, you can kind of make sense of it more. But as a racing driver, I can understand that that would be quite scary. So... so I don't think anyone's disputing the red flag being called in this case, but should should it have been a red flag in Australia? Uh, take that. I, I'm not. <laughs> I think I'm sort of on the fence. I'm sort of from a George's point of view, and we've heard him on the radio. That was scary. You, you're you're there, and it's a fast corner. I think if that was a junior race, 
it would have been red flagged and you see them often in, in the UK. Uh, I know the rules can slightly be different, but if it was a junior category, I can tell you now that would have been red flagged and they would, the race would have ended like that. Even we've seen it actually in Formula 2, Formula 3, race will not be resumed it's classed as a result we actually had it didn't we harry with the, the formula three championship a couple of years ago uh the race was oh that was fun was it that was and, a title uh, decider we were both Monza. doing that together weren't we and there was a whole load of confusion at who'd won the championship blah 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 but even it does happen under fia championship so in an ideal world probably should have done because the result wasn't going to change i know Obviously, it can be controversial sometimes whether they want to get that extra lap of racing in. But, um, yeah, it's potentially it would have the safest thing would have been because if what happens if, you know, you had a radio issue and you couldn't hear the radio and someone come round and, and smacked in to, uh, to, to George. But uh, there we go. I guess uh, they've red flagged this one. And racing will resume in around about 10 minutes time which I reckon was, was it about 10 minutes ago that I said it was going to be 20 minutes? <laughs> well, we'll have to play that back Perfectly. and get the exact timings Perfectly. on that one. Yeah, just about 10 minutes then until we get I am uh, the FIA, this, hey? <laughs> this restart. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> underway for the Japanese uh, Grand Prix, uh, all the cars uh, in the pit lane and just having uh, their tyres prepped and ready before they head back out and uh, rejoin uh, the grid. So we're hoping to get the Japanese Grand Prix back underway in uh, around about 10 minutes time. Big weekend, big day of sport across BBC Radio 5 Live. Big game in the Scottish uh, Premiership. Rangers versus Celtic. That's uh, getting going from 11.30 on 5 Live. Uh, and then, of course, football as well. Manchester United versus Liverpool later on this afternoon. Half past three, you can hear all of the action. And from half past five, Sheffield United versus Chelsea. But right now on 5 Live, it is coverage of the Japanese Grand Prix with myself, Harry Benjamin, racing driver Alice Powell and Jenny Gao as cars uh, getting teed up uh, with tyres being put on. Here's what Joe Guan Yu has to say. Uh, it's going to be a standing restart. Uh, the Chinese driver just being told that it is going to be a standing restart. So, Alice, they'll get back into the cars and they'll head out, essentially, uh, and rejoin the grid as it was for the initial start? Yeah, normal procedures, effectively, but the mechanics aren't all going to go out onto to the grid and we're not going to have them all sit there. Uh, the cars will, will, will go around uh, and then, yeah, they'll, they'll line back up on the grid. But all drivers going through their procedure, Pierre Gasly, he crouches down uh, at the front of his car each time before he gets in with visor down. Doesn't speak to anybody as he wanders around the car and, and hops in. But one thing that I did notice from the start is Fernando Alonso, he's on those soft tyres. So he got a very good launch, but he had nowhere to go. It's almost like Sainz and Norris had that in their head that, OK, we know he's on the soft tyre. Uh, Sainz, of course, did try it down the inside of Lando Norris. Uh, but due to that, <laughs> Fernando couldn't make any gains forward because he, he did get a good launch but uh, he'll be hoping to get an even better one to just try and sneak down the inside of one of those two do you think he'll start on the soft tyres again I mean you can take a free selection of, of tyre if there's a red flag he started he was only one of the top ten to start on softs will he do that again can he do that again or is that advantage now played and gone nothing would have I mean there would have been life taken out of the tyre but uh, they literally got, what, halfway around the lap, if that, um, before the red flag sort of came out. So you wouldn't have had a great deal taken out of the tyre. So I'd expect him to start on the soft tyre again just to go, right, OK, this is what I did at this start. I could have been a little bit better here or I could have done this slightly different here to just give me the best chance of, uh, of, of jumping those in front. It, I mean, that, the mindset of this as a driver, that's quite interesting. Is it almost like, okay, great, well, I made that mistake last time, I get another chance now. Or is it almost a bit, bit, a bit well, the heart rate has already risen to that level. You put all your effort and, and concentration into that initial restart and then you're sort of all put out of joint all of a sudden, two corners into the race and then you've got to rate around, you're back in the garage. How difficult is that for a driver to, to comprehend in their mind? Well, firstly, it's the same for everybody. Uh, everyone will have different procedures. We see some of the drivers there that were chatting to engineers. Some were just sat on their own. Uh, everyone has their own sort of procedure. But there would be many times that uh, that they, these drivers, and certainly they, uh, most of them have had it, experienced that in Formula One, where you've got going, your heart rate's risen, you're in that zone where you're just focusing, you've done your checklist, you're there on the grid, you've had the start, come back in, 
reset and then you go again do you know what? it is it is easy as a, as a driver to to fall back into okay right get back in the car i'm in the mindset lewis hamilton again prime example he was just sort of rearranging his suit stood at the front of the car going in you all have a way you get some drivers that that have to put certain gloves on first that have to get in from a certain side and that's all counts some may say it's superstition but it's also just the procedure where it's almost telling your your brain or a sign to your body right this is me being in the zone this is this is race time so i didn't really have that kind of procedure i just as soon as i sat down in that car and i'm strapped in then for me it, it, it was race time but as i said everyone's different and everyone is eager to get this racing back underway the uh, grandstands absolutely packed everyone smiling and waving they've all so much support for so many different drivers and nationalities uh here in japan with they've got the spanish flags you've got ferrari flags as well mercedes there's a yuki sonoda flag of course uh waving high in the grandstands uh, it was a tough start for sonoda on that uh, medium compound attire lost a couple of positions uh, he'll restart this race uh, from 12th, uh, which will get going again at 2.32 local time. So uh, not long to wait. Just enough time, Jenny, for a cup of tea. Five minutes. Talking about tea, hashtag BBC F1. Girl in the pit lane's getting in touch saying, with it breaking proceedings, time to put the kettle on me, thinks. Do you know what? No one's put the kettle on here. I'd love a cuppa. <laughs> I Poor think, come on, Joe, producer, producer Joe, Joe. Joe. go effort. and get, get us a cup of tea. Macaroni pie says, still waiting for that cuppa. I know the feeling. Um, a lot of people talking about how that crash has fooled their strategy. It was one stop, now it's a two stop for them. Um, and lots of people um, saying it's very early to be up, but glad they're listening to us. And we're glad you're listening to us too. Get in touch if you want to. Hashtag BBCF1. Keep us amused for the four minutes that it will take for this race to restart. Yep, glad to have you along with us. It's dry and sunny in Suzuka. The track uh, has been the hottest, actually. It's been all weekend. Uh, temperatures generally cooler uh, than usual. Uh, we had the initial start of the Grand Prix, but the red flags came out on the opening lap after Alex Albon in the Williams and Daniel Ricciardo uh, had a big crash uh, on the exit of turn two, approaching the left-hander of turn three. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo in front of Alex Albon, and as he made to turn into the left-hander of three drifted out wide to the right-hand side and then immediately finds himself spinning around with Albon tapping into the back of him and also finding himself into the tyre barriers. We just had another look at, at it, Alice, and you just spotted something. Yeah, Danny Ricciardo looked left as he was approaching turn three, so he's checked his left mirror, but he doesn't check his right mirror. I mean, sometimes you don't have to have to turn your head. Uh, you can just use your, plainly look ahead and use your eyes, but he made a, an effort to turn his head to to look in his left mirror, but didn't appear to make any effort to look in his right. I think he just assumed there was no car there. Maybe he, I'll have to see it again, maybe he did just check coming out of, of turn two and thought, okay, well, no one's there, because it was actually in between that very short straight of two and, and three that Albon decided to pull to, to the right-hand side side but yeah i think as i've said i don't think he knew he was there but it was interesting to see that he, interesting to see that he, he did check his left but not his right mirror well that is going to be investigated by the stewards after the race we're just a few more minutes away from getting the japanese grand prix back underway it'll be interesting to see if anybody has gone for a tire swap uh, which you are free to do uh, under a red flag conditions we saw in the initial restart that soft compound attire the softest rubber the fastest rubber gives you a much better start than if you're on the medium compound attire uh, and the two rbs uh, falling back initially due to them being on the medium compound attire and everybody behind them Hulkenberg Bottas getting uh, a soft uh, hard charging start to get ahead and Alonso in fifth uh, was initially the highest uh, runner on that soft compound attire so be one to watch out for uh, as we uh, uh, get ready for this uh, second restart I'm on Twitter watch at the moment and X watch sorry I should say yes, that you're one, one, um, careful these days I know <laughs> be careful with everything but Jack is uh, uh, and a few of the others have um, said on Twitter again X. Can they take Albon and put him in Sergeant's car? And if I was Sergeant, I wouldn't get out of that car in the red flag. I'd just stay in it in case they switch. No, they're not allowed to switch. Uh, I think I think they were being a okay. bit. Okay. Well, I, I, I can never. You're, you're so professional, Jenny. I can't <laughs> tell if you're joking. And now I know you're joking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they can't. But I mean, 
Yeah, let's not, let's not open that can of worms again. James Val, see what he thinks. Let's not, <laughs> oh, we, let's not put ideas into his head, shall yeah, we? Yeah, okay. Um, Roxy as well, hashtag BBC One. What order are they starting in? Uh, are they? Did they cover enough ground to change the order? Uh, well, they did, and uh, but the top, well, ten is well, the top nine is kind of as it was. Uh, Verstappen will start this race once again for pole position. Perez in second, Norris third, Sainz, Alonso the top five, Piastri, Hamilton, Leclerc, Russell the top nine, Hulkenberg, thanks to his fast start, will now get a top ten start in front of Bottas, Sonoda, Ocon, Gasly and Stroll, the top 15, Magnussen, Sargent and Joe, the 18 runners uh, that will uh, start, restart this race with no Daniel Ricciardo and no Alex Albon. Now, of course, under red flag conditions, uh, you can give yourself uh, a shiny new set of tyres, and I think that's exactly what a lot of the runners have done. Shiny new uh, soft compound tyres uh, onto the Sauber of Joe Guanyu right at the back of the pack. I think Lewis Hamilton has opted uh, for a set of the hard compound of tyre by the looks of things, the white walled rubber, and Max Verstappen on a, a shiny new set, I think, on the medium compound of tyre. No, I think Max is, he still, is, on the Max old is still on the old ones. Yeah, it only looks like Hamilton. Uh, can you just tell me there's no chance that Hamilton can do the whole race on that set of hards? Just, just reassure me, because they've made their um, standard pit swap, so they don't have to come it back into the pit lane. But surely, 50, what's it going to be, 48 racing laps? Can't be done. Yeah, can't be done. No, too tough, uh, especially in these slightly warmer temperatures. And it looks like, did I see Russell there as well? Has changed his his tyres. Let's have a look. Yes, so both Mercedes have decided to change onto the hard tyre. Having a little look through. Uh, Sargent is on a new set of softs. Joe on a new set of medium tyres. So... Only a few deciding to uh, to change their tyres. Looks actually it looks like the Alpines maybe. It's actually more than I thought had changed tyres, but certainly those I expected in that sort of top ten, um, or bar the the two Mercedes, uh, have decided to keep on their compounds that they were currently on. So they've all overtaken the safety car. So the safety car initially led them out of the pit lane just to start this procedure off. All drivers have now passed the safety car. They will continue to warm up their tyres using the brakes, using uh, their wheel and the throttle and the brakes to, to warm, weaving left to right, and uh, just put some load through the tyres. And then it all starts again, Harry. We'll have them all cars, well, nearly all of them, 18 at least, uh, line up on the grid. Yeah, so just to reconfirm the tyre situation, the top three have stuck with their mediums, Verstappen, Perez and Norris. Sainz has gone for a fresh set of mediums. Hamilton and Russell have swapped to the hards, uh, hard compound of tyre, so they could be vulnerable off the line. Ocon is also on the hard compound of tyre further back in 13th ahead of his teammate Gasly, who has also gone for hard. Sonoda has swapped to the soft compound of tyre. Uh, Joe Guanyu as well, right at the back of the pack, has also done the same thing. Tire deg is really high. I, you're not going to be able to go to the end on these hard compound of tyres. No, no chance. They will have to box at some point. Uh, just the the amount of load that goes through these tyres here and also the, the tarmac. It's a very abrasive surface. So we do have the C1, which is the hardest, C2, medium, C3, soft, and these are the same tyre compounds uh, that we, we saw the drivers use in Bahrain. Leclerc in the Ferrari, starting from eighth, also going for a new set of medium compound of tyres. Here we go then for the restart. Verstappen has led the field round a lap as it's a carbon copy of what happened a few moments ago, three laps ago to be precise. That's what they are saying on the timing screens. Verstappen will start from pole position. Matt, uh, Sergio Perez alongside him for a Red Bull lockout. Then it will be Lando Norris in third, Sainz fourth, Alonso the top five, Piastri in sixth ahead of Hamilton, Leclerc, Russell and Hulkenberg in the Haas rounds out the top ten. Valtteri Bottas in the Sauber goes from 11th in front of Ocon and Gasly, Magnussen and Sargent the top 15, Joe Guanyu uh, in 16th uh, with uh, Sonoda 
uh, we're in 16th. Uh, green flag flies at the back of the pack and we will get this uh, Japanese Grand Prix uh, back underway then. Verstappen on pole. It's all ice to the lights and foot to the floor as we go racing once again in Japan. Verstappen with not as good a start the second time around has to cut across in front of Perez. He does so as they plunge through turns one and two. The downhill double right-hander as they jostle for position. Carlos Sainz battling with Fernando Alonso over fourth and fifth. They make their way up through the S's now. Turns one, two, three, four and five. Making their way uphill as they approach Dunlop Curve. Verstappen with a clean start in front of Perez. Norris third. Sainz, Alonso the top five. Leclerc, Hamilton, Russell, Ocon with a great start in the Alpine. Getting himself up into the top ten as they peek over the crest. Approaching now the first of the Degners. The right-handers come quickly at you. Verstappen though, Alice, with a great start. Regains the lead. Yeah, and Perez got a good start, as you mentioned, too, Harry. He's pulled a slight gap of both Red Bulls uh, back to Lando. Norris Alonso didn't get as good a start as he would have wanted. He didn't really challenge uh, signs in front of him, so he'll be slightly disappointed with that. Then a slight gap back from Alonso to Piastri, but Leclerc managed to jump. Lewis Hamilton, of course, who's on those uh, those hard tyres, but the Mercedes actually did quite a good job of not dropping back. And Ocon, who's actually surrounded by Bottas and he was surrounded by Hulkenberg who were both on the soft tyre great job by Esteban he's on the hard tyre to, to jump those two yeah, well, also there's definitely an issue going on for the uh, timing uh, transponder for Yuki Tsunoda, uh, who is uh, up, and I think he's just behind uh, one of the Mercedes cars, but he's registering as being plumb last at the moment. There's something wrong with that transponder there. Uh, we start then lap four of a restarted Japanese Grand Prix. It is Verstappen who leads Perez, Norris and Sainz battling as they come into turn one. Sainz staying close with his former teammate as they run out through turn two. They've dropped along a little bit behind but uh, the McLaren of Norris then having to look at his mirrors in these early stages both on the medium compound of tyre strategy then going to be so crucial with higher than expected tyre degradation across the three uh, compounds that Pirelli have bought and this is the sign, sound of Carlos Sainz the Australian Grand Prix winner what an amazing story that was coming back after having his appendix removed and his recovery Chasing Norris. Yeah, Pierre gave me a hit and the side. Let me know if it's okay. Will do. That was Esteban Ocon on the radio saying that his teammate Gasly gave him a little hit on the side and having to check that. Uh, Verstappen, Perez, Norris, Sainz, Alonso the top five. Piastri, Leclerc, Hamilton, Sonoda is in ninth in front of Russell who rounds out the top ten. Ocon, Bottas, Stroll, Gasly, Magnus in the top 15. Joe ahead of Hulkenberg in 17th. Sargent down 18th and last with no Daniel Ricciardo and no Alex Albon after crashing on the initial start of this race bringing out the red flag which we had for around about 20 or so minutes before we got this restart underway under the blue skies and sun that is beaming down on this 5.8 kilometer 3.6 mile Suzuka circuit 18 turns 10 to the right and 8 to the left as we start lap 5 of 53 Verstappen with just over a second in front of Perez but actually Perez was with, still within DRS zone so he's managed to open the flap on the rear wing and so too has George Russell who gets past the home hero with DRS down into turn one Russell up into ninth Sonoda down to tenth as Bottas does a carbon copy and he gets up into 11th in front of Esteban Ocon who gets put down to 12th Lando Norris will be disappointed that he's dropped out of the DRS reach of those in front i.e. that being Perez but uh, we're seeing a replay of the start now all nice and gentle I'll tell you what though one of the Haas cars and I think that might have been Holkerberg sunk pretty much to the bottom of the pack so he got a really disappointing start uh, George Russell had a slight lock up and I'm just trying to see and there we go it's almost like uh, they read my mind see the incident between the two Alpines and yeah there was contact between two of them but in all fairness to Gasly he had one of the RBs and of course the sole remaining RB of Yuki Tsunoda on his right hand side and he was in that sandwich and, and had nowhere to go but uh, DRS is enabled but Verstappen he stretched his legs and uh, he's opened up a 1.2 second gap now as they're just coming through 130R Harry and the DRS detection zone is on the exit of that so I don't think that looking at these pictures that Perez 
was close enough, so I under one second to Max Verstappen to get the DRS down the main straight. As uh, Verstappen crosses the line to start lap six and sets the fastest lap time, and then you're absolutely spot on, Alice, with that Perez not close enough to stay within the DRS uh, detection. Uh, George Russell uh, had a, uh, a bad turn one on this initial restart. Big lockup coming into turn one, forced out wide, and that was how he initially uh, was behind Yuki Tsunoda as Lance Stroll further back in the Aston Martin with the help of DRS moves to the inside, down through turn one and gets in front of Esteban Ocon. Uh, Stroll now 12th, Ocon in 13th and being told on the radio as well that all looks fine on his car after uh, his uh, teammates uh, made a little bit of contact. Uh, it was uh, Ocon's fright, uh, front right tyre to uh, Gasly's left side pod. Out of the second Degna, further up and that's not going to do uh, Perez's uh, hopes any good. He runs out wide, chasing down his teammate Sergio Perez, uh, Max Verstappen getting on uh, to the Astro runoff on the exit of the second Degna. Yeah, and that's a frustrating corner, that second deck. Now, you always usually either have a little bit of oversteer on the way in and then some understeer on the way out. And I'm guessing that's what will have happened to Perez as he skateboarded across the slightly raised curb there. But he's escaped with it, albeit dropping back from Max Verstappen even more as Max is really stretching his legs. And even Lando Norris hasn't really caught up to the back, but he has got a charging Carlos Sainz, who is closing the gap now. The sound you can hear is riding on board with Perez, and yeah, he just understeered wide. And there's like a lip on the curb, a raised bit between the curb and it is painted AstroTurf, actually. And we've seen several drivers almost, I'm not joking, skateboard along it. So uh, bottoming out along that curb, and that's exactly what's happened to Perez there. And uh, his uh, front left tyre as well, uh, getting dyed green, uh, going across that painted Astro. Uh, Verstappen then leads, lap 7 of 53. Perez, Norris, signs Alonso the top five. This is the sound of Kevin Magnussen, who's on the medium compound of tyre, down in 14th. He's got a great scrap in front of him, trying to get in front of the two Alpines, Gasly and Ocon, just in front of him. Tried to get close under DRS, coming into turn one, but then it all concertinas up, and really, it's one... Uh, one way through that one car at a time as you then head downhill through turns one and two and then up through the S section of corners which bring you towards the uh, crest that is Dunlop curve, the slight left-hander and then you reach the Degnas. Uh, I think we've also just had a, uh, a pit stop as well. Valtteri Bottas has come in, Jenny. Yeah, Valtteri Bottas has come in. He started on the soft. It was a used soft, so he's managed to do a few laps. Uh, was it about four or five um, after the race restart and then it's come in and gone onto the hards now Esteban Ocon is also on the hards and he's struggling out there he can't get them up to temperature he's lost out to Stroll as well Stroll's doing a good job actually of fighting back after a poor qualifying but yeah the hard tyres just taking a while to bed in well, and we're just also getting another look at the pit stop for Valtteri Bottas. Of course, Sauber have had a terrible time with their pit stops in the first three races of this year with wheel nut issues, keeping Bottas in the pits for almost 20, 30 seconds at a time. That time around, though, he was in and out within four seconds, which is still on the slower side, but it's better than 30 seconds. An improvement then from Sauber in their uh, pit stops for Bottas. He rejoins 17 as his teammate Joe Guan Yu is called in and Yuki Tsunoda comes into the pits from 10th place as he slots in to his grid spot just outside of his RB garage. A 2.5 second stop uh, to service the Japanese driver who sticks on a pair of hard, a set of hard compound tyres. Yeah, so it is lap eight now. We're seeing some of those on the softs deciding to come into the pits. Yuki comes out losing time. He's going to slot behind Valtteri Bottas. So uh, he'll be disappointed but I think he's actually just lost a little bit of time in that sort of, you could say, Mercedes sandwich as such in between Hamilton and Russell. Ocon now is under pressure from Kevin Magnussen. He's managed to, Magnussen's managed to get past Gasly. Uh, we're just going to catch a replay. It's going to be a pretty simple one on the outside down into turn one. Gasly made a slight attempt to, to defend, but the aid of DRS uh, from Magnussen was... Uh, Pretty easy for him to, to sail on through, Harry. Yeah, as he makes that move, Magnussen up into 12. Further up, though, Verstappen now has a 2.2 second gap in the lead in front of his teammate Sergio Perez. Lando Norris is third, then comes Carlos Sainz, and we can hear him on the radio. Yeah, I feel like I'm struggling a bit. Cop it. 
So Sainz reporting that he's seeing Lando struggling a little bit. Alonso rounds out the top five. Jenny. Seeing a lot of people starting to come into the pits and switch onto those hard tyres. I'm just wondering, Alice, have they used the performance of Hamilton and Russell, who started restarted on those hards and gone, actually, we fancy a bit of that? Why are they all shifting? Potentially. I mean, we don't know what their original plan was. The, the pit window really for these soft tyres, as I said earlier, was anything between eight and uh, sort of lap 15. Uh, and they have obviously feel that they've reached the peak uh, of those tyres and it's only going to get worse from here on in. So best for them to come in. But naturally, you would probably see quite a few of them switch to that hard tyre anyway just because of the, the degradation that you experience uh, at this circuit as uh, Logan Sergeant is uh, making an attempt to get past Pierre Gasly in the, the Alpine. He was actually dropped off the back of his teammate Esteban Ocon. He sort of crawled his way forward, didn't he? And then we're here for Max. Can I have any front wing uptake, please? Yeah, initially I'm just here now. Slowly shifting towards the steer. Okay, as, uh, as expected then, thank you. Yeah, maybe one or two clicks less is okay. I won't say I told you so, but understood. Thank you. <laughs> so Verstappen and his engineer, GP, they do have a great relationship together, don't they? Uh, talking about uh, uh, understeer and oversteer, and what kind of, uh, when he says uh, how many clicks, what does that mean, Alex? So that is just an adjustment on the front wing. So what they'll do, what that means is, is he just wants a little bit more front wing. So when he comes in to do the pit stop, there will be someone at the front of that car that will literally just make those two little clicks, uh, adjustments on the front wing, uh, uh, all different for, for some of the teams. I'm not sure what Red Bull's set up, but usually there'll just be a tool that will stick on the front. They'll get a couple of turns, and I'll add more front wing to Max Verstappen, which will give him a little bit more performance on the front end of the car, will help him uh, with that understeer. Won't help him so much with the oversteer. However, it could just be the tyre degradation that's being caused. Here's George. Steering is starting to feel a bit strange. A lot of vibrations. Yeah, AFM, we're, uh, we're looking at the data. So Russell saying the steering starts to feel a bit strange. A lot of vibrations reporting that back to the team. He's currently down in ninth. It's lap 10 of 53 of the Japanese Grand Prix. And uh, I think Oscar Piastri in the McLaren is starting to struggle a little bit uh, on these medium compounder tyres. He's being reeled in at a rate of knots by the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc, who was closed to within half a second. In fact, he almost had a little look down into turn one a moment ago with the help of DRS. Wasn't quite close enough on that occasion, but he is right behind the the Australian driver who uh, turned 23 yesterday, so that battle for sick heating up. Uh, Sainz uh, is 1.2 seconds back from the other McLaren of Norris in third. Norris still just about holding his own and keeping Sainz just out of DRS zone for the time being. Uh, the two Mercedes, you just heard Russell a moment ago talking about some steering uh, vibrations, uh, both with very different lines coming into the uh, hairpin, the left-hander. Hamilton much wider on the exit. Russell much tighter and closer to the apex. Russell, within a second of his teammate, both of them opted to uh, put a set of hard compound tyres on under the red flag. But uh, Russell clearly not quite comfortable in that car. Let's hear what his teammate's saying. And we're seeing high deck on the medium runners. That's uh, Bono, his uh, Pete Bonneton. No, Lewis Hamilton's engineer saying they're seeing high degradation on the medium oh. compound runners as we just get a, a little look. This is the sound on board the Williams driver of Logan Sargent who is chasing down 13th place Gasly out of the final corner. Gasly having a huge moment losing the rear end and that unfortunately was the writing on the wall for the Frenchman with Sargent and his DRS2. The Williams sweeps down the inside into turn one and makes the move up into 13th. Gasly now down into 14th. It's Verstappen who leads Perez, Norris Signs Alonso the top five, Piastri, Leclerc, Hamilton, Russell, Stroll the top ten, Ocon, Magnussen, Sargent, Gasly, Bottas the top fifteen, Sonoda, Hulkenberg, and Joe. The eighteen drivers still in this race after Daniel Ricciardo and Alex Albon crashed out on the initial start, causing a red flag. We are now restarted. Pit stops underway, and uh, as uh, Lando Norris uh, in third gets told to box box and come into the pits, his teammate who seems to be struggling on his set of tyres at the moment. Oscar Piastri still keeping Charles Leclerc at bay for the time being. Six tenths between the two drivers. As they make their way towards the left-hander of 130R. 
the two Mercedes as well still line astern as they come into the chicane Russell closing in on Hamilton expected to go a little longer into this race as Lando Norris Jenny comes into the pits yeah he's on those medium tyres at the moment he swings into the pits it's expected to be a 22 second pit stop so let's see what Norris can do he swings in they lift the car up take the wheels off and they've put him onto a set of the hard tyres. They seem to be performing well, 2.3 seconds. And looking at those Ferraris, just hearing from um, Leclerc and his um, engineer, they're saying, well done, you're doing well. But actually, Ferrari this year seem to be kinder to their tyres, and they do seem to be performing better. So whatever they've done in the winter seems to be working for tyre saving, because last year, they were terrible at it. Yeah, yeah, they didn't get it right last year, did they? Uh, they weren't the only team, but Sainz has now got free air, so he's four seconds back, 4.2 seconds back from uh, Perez, who's in P2, so he's got a bit of clean air to really try and push now, and I'm just looking at the micro sectors on our timing screen, he's setting a, a couple of green, which stand for personal best, so he'll be hoping to, to basically effectively get the jump on uh, on Norris. So Norris is out, coming out back in P10, actually, on the hard tyre, as the two Mercedes are getting quite close. And uh, this may end up starting looking fairly similar to what we saw last year, Harry. If you remember, the Hamilton and Russell sort of battle that we had last year. Hamilton certainly getting his elbows out with George Russell last year. If I can remember rightly, squeezing him at Spoon, and George was on the radio saying, well... Uh, who are we racing, each other or everybody else? And the gap now between these two drivers, six tenths of a second as they go across the line. And Oscar Piastri now, he's coming into the pits. It was a smooth stop for his teammate, Lando Norris, as he's waved in. Does he hit his marks? Yes, he does. Nicely done. Bit of a slow stop for the right, uh, sorry, the rear left tyre, but still... Didn't slow him down too much, not as quick as Lando stopped, but 2.9 for Oscar. And as he comes out of the pit lane, Magnussen is uh, there making a move on Ocon uh, to get uh, down the inside and up into ninth. Uh, as Stroll comes out of the pits as well in 17th, it's all going down in the bottom half uh, of the field at the moment. Here's what Hamilton's saying though in six. That was wow. Hamilton asking, shall I let George by? Uh, so uh, uh, clearly, perhaps he's feeling that he's not as quick uh, as Russell. Russell's certainly keeping him uh, well within his sights. So they both uh, make their way out of the hairpin exit. Uh, Russell eight tenths behind Hamilton as it currently stands. Yeah, no response from the team on the radio just yet. Maybe they're all having a little chat with each other. But Hamilton does look like he's struggling with the rear of the car more compared to, to George running wider out of turn 11 which is the the tight hairpin back into the pits uh, who is that is Joe Guan Yu I've just heard from the team they're saying they've had to retire the car technical issues they had made a third pit stop and that looked bad as Hamilton now lets by George Russell going into the final corner Lewis will have actually uh, the, the drag from uh, or the tow from from George's car down the straight, but George will have the, the DRS. So Mercedes opting to swap as into the pits comes Fernando Alonso, and on goes a set of the medium tyres. Yeah, they've swapped. Ju the Mercedes have swapped just as Alonso comes into the pit. So that promotes Russell up into fifth now, in front of Hamilton in sixth. Slap 14 to 53. The top two, Verstappen and Perez, the two Red Bulls, still haven't come into the pits. Neither has Sainz or Leclerc. They're in third and fourth. Then it's Russell, Hamilton, Norris, Alonso, Magnussen, who's stuck out there on the medium compound of tyres, worked his way up into ninth spot. Piastri, who has just pitted and fed out now in the top 10. Ocon, Sargent, Bottas, Sonoda, Hulkenberg, the top 15. Gasly, Stroll, the 17 drivers now remaining in this race after Joe Guan Yu has just been asked and told to retire by the Sauber team. He's been wheeled into his garage. Such a shame uh, for the Chinese. Razor had a really tough qualifying as well. Started plum last uh, as uh, Sonoda uh, just seeing a replay there of him uh, getting past uh, Nico Hulkenberg that's further down for 14th position Jenny yeah gearbox issues for Joe in that uh, Sauber he'll hope for better in two weeks time when he'll be racing in front of his home fans 
Yeah, big uh, big race for uh, Joe Guanyu. First time China's been back on the calendar since uh, well pre-COVID times. Sadly out of this race and they had technical problems in FP3 and also ahead of the Grand Prix overnight. Sauber changed the survival cell, including the fuel cell and all the pipe work and the chassis harness for that Sauber. So clearly a lot of issues uh, on that car, hoping to be figured out in time for Joe's home race in a couple of weeks' time. Lap 15 of 53, Verstappen, Perez, Sainz, Leclerc, Russell, the top five as pit stops begin to unfold. Uh, and we see where this strategy uh, kicks out after a uh, restarted race, a red flag coming out just two corners into lap one involving Daniel Ricciardo and Alex Albon. That incident uh, will be investigated after the race. Uh, the sole remaining Williams of Logan Sargent lining up a nice move to get in front of Esteban Ocon. DRS a little bit of toe. He looks to the left, looks to the right, decides the outside line is his best bet into turn one. Sargent makes the move stick and up into 11th. Ocon down to 12th and now having to look all in his mirrors because the sole remaining fluoro green salva of Valtteri Bottas is right behind him and the home hero Yuki Tsunoda in the other sole remaining RB just behind as well as they come over the crest of Dunlop Kurt. Carlos Sainz, Alice, now told to box. First of the Ferraris to come into the pits. Yeah, he is. And it's quite early for those, the medium tyres, but we did hear, didn't we, Lewis Hamilton's engineer say the medium runners are slightly struggling. Uh, so he'll be coming into the pits. It's not ideal for Yuki. He's got a bit of traffic. The Alpine is, they are not looking good with the traction. Uh, really strong, especially on uh, Gasly's car. Hands pulls of oversteer he's got. As Perez is the first of the Red Bulls to come into the pits as well. So similar time pitting uh, between him and Perez. Max Verstappen, though, still waiting on that front wing change. And uh, I had a message from... Andrew Benson, the BBC F1 correspondent, saying that he was less wing he was asking for, so they will, of course, be taking some wing off, whereas I believe I said a little bit more added on. So uh, either way, it's going to be a front wing change when Max Verstappen comes into the pits. Perez in and out, signs in the Ferrari, in and out of the garage as well. Both of those cars on uh, sets of medium compound tyres. Perez feeds out in sixth, signs uh, down in seventh. Uh, Verstappen now with a 17.2 second lead in front of Charles Leclerc as the Sauber of Valtteri Bottas swoops round the outside of Esteban Ocon into turn one. The Frenchman's woes continue as he plummets down the order. Next up to make a move will be Yuki Tsunoda, who has never scored points in his home race in the last few visits for him. He had a top 10 start on the initial uh, getaway, but then opted uh, to... Uh, well, he plummeted down the field as well because he was on the medium compound of tyre and everyone else behind him was on the soft rubber, the quicker rubber, better off the line. On the restart, he decided to put the soft compound of tyre on, had a better start of it and is now eyeing up the back of Esteban Ocon having switched to the hard compound of tyre. That's over 13 and 14. Max Verstappen is given the call to box, box. It's got 17 seconds in front of Leclerc, and the expected pit loss time is between 21 and 22 seconds. So let's see how nip and tuck it is as Verstappen comes into the pits and uh, waits to be serviced by the Red Bull mechanics. The battle over fourth place on the road is currently between Lewis Hamilton, who has not stopped on the hard compound of tyre. He's being reeled in by Lando Norris, who has stopped, and with DRS, Hamilton in the middle of the road, defending a little bit from Norris, who's forced the long way round, round the outside into turn one and two, but the Norris with the tyre advantage makes that move work and up into fourth spot. Leclerc now leads this race, lap 17 of 53 in the Ferrari. Verstappen is pitted and fed out in third, in second, I should say, actually. Russell in third. Then it's Norris, Hamilton now the top five with Perez six, signs Alonso, Piastri and Magnussen at the top ten as Sonoda finally does get through on Esteban Ocon for 13th further back, Alice. Straight away, Max Verstappen somewhere along the lap and has already overtaken George Russell, so he's now up into to P2, the theoretical leader. You could say Dan Ricciardo's watching on from the pit wall, being heavily disappointed with that contact earlier on. Sergio Perez is making his way past Lewis Hamilton. He really is sort of struggling on those hard tyres, certainly compared to his teammate. But Hamilton's uh, not making it easy for for everybody else to, to get past, is he? He made it hard for, for Lando and he's making it hard for Perez as well. 
Do you know what? I love seeing Perez and Hamilton. We've seen them so many times, maybe battling for the front. He's going to make the move, Jenny, into the left hand of 130R. You're brave if you make a move through there, but Perez in the red ball with an advantage over Hamilton in the in, down the inside of 130R makes that move stick. Perez now up into fifth, Hamilton into sixth. I don't think Hamilton fought that one too hard, but side by side through 130R is brave stuff from the Mexican who now gets up into fifth. Piastri uh, down in ninth. His teammate Lando Norris has just swept past the other Mercedes of uh, George Russell. Norris now back up into third uh, where he was uh, before he came into the pits. So this is working out nicely uh, for Lando Norris uh, for the time being. Perez though carving his way through the field. His next uh, victim will be George Russell and he's already within DRS range of the British driver. Yeah, it's not worked out well for, for signs. He was, when Lando came into the pits, I think the gap was about 1.4 seconds. Maybe I've got that wrong, but I'm sure it was under two seconds. Whereas the gap's certainly much higher than that. Signs now is 1.6 behind Lewis Hamilton, who is uh, a few positions down compared to Lando Norris and is probably around about five seconds off Lando. So it's not really worked out for signs. No, and the earlier pit stop for Norris compared to Perez has really helped him out. He has jumped him, and, and that's going to give Perez, uh, Norris at least a track position advantage. The Red Bull may be outright quicker, but at the moment, Norris trying his best to, to split up those two Red Bulls. Speak of the second Red Bull. This is the sound of Sergio Perez, who just overtook Lewis Hamilton into the left-hander of 130R. One lap later, he does the exact same thing to George Russell. He's making that his go-to corner. Perez now up into fourth spot. Russell down to fifth and Perez now just two and a half seconds back from Lando Norris who just crosses the line to start lap 19 and sets the fastest lap of this race. It's Leclerc who leads on lap 19 of 53. Leclerc yet to pit in that Ferrari. Verstappen, Norris, Perez, Russell the top five, Hamilton, Sainz, Alonso, Piastri, Magnus in the top ten. Here's Hamilton. Dropping front right step. Okay, copy. Uh, Hamilton saying tyres are dropping off, so I wonder how long before he is uh, called to the pit. Signs is uh, indeed four tenths behind him uh, for that battle for sixth and seventh. Uh, outside of the top ten, it's Bottas at 11th, then Sergeant 12th, who is trying his best to fend off Yuki Tsunoda, is all over the back of him coming up through turns three, four, and five. Uh, Stroll 14, Hulkenberg the top 15, then it's the two Alpines who round out the field of 17 drivers with no joke. Brand new having to retire in this race and no RB of Daniel Ricciardo after being involved in an incident with the Williams of Alex Albon that brought out the red flag right at the start of this race. Almost side by side action in the rundown towards Spoon. Signs eyeing up Lewis Hamilton. Signs to the inside as they make their way through the double left hander of Spoon curve and gets the move done. The scarlet red Ferrari makes its move past the silver arrow. Signs up into sixth. Hamilton down to seventh, struggling on this hard compound attire, Jenny Gow. Yeah, just listening across to Team Radio and uh, Charles Leclerc, who's leading this race at the moment but hasn't stopped, and they're saying to him, we think Plan B is our best option, but with Plan A tyres. And Charles like, why? And Zavi's saying the hard seems to be poor on the Mercedes. So they are looking at that Mercedes and trying to work out how to react to them and looking at what they've got available to them as well, which is a big choice this weekend. It is, and we've just seen a replay, and the sound you can hear now is looking back from Lewis Hamilton to Carlos Sainz. Very close to contact on the exit there of turn 11. <laughs> Carlos Sainz almost had to jink out of the way slightly. I think that, this is the only uh, way Hamilton seems to be getting uh, some enjoyment out of his race uh, this afternoon or this morning. Is He's trying to have some close battles and make it difficult for those uh, coming past him uh, to, to get through. So uh, Lewis Hamilton not particularly happy. 18 laps completed uh, on those hard tyres for him. Yeah, Hamilton certainly wasn't making it easy for Carlos Sainz to make his way past and up into sixth. Leclerc, Verstappen, Norris, Perez, Russell, the top five. Uh, this is the sound of Sergio, uh, of Max Verstappen. 
in his Red Bull, chasing down Charles Leclerc to regain the lead of the Japanese Grand Prix. They're making their way through the left-hander of 130R. Flat out if you dare, before you then reach the braking zone for the final chicane. Turn 16, 17 and 18. Seeing a lot of cars clout that inside curve. Traction is your friend coming out of the exit. The pit lane entry is to your right. Both cars remain out. The start finish straight beckons next with DRS, the drag reduction system, giving Verstappen the advantage. The rear wing opens up and then slams shut under braking. Verstappen round the outside of Leclerc to regain the lead of this race on lap 21 of 53. And meanwhile, uh, Leclerc's teammate Carlos Sainz uh, is applying the pressure to George Russell and the Mercedes. They're making their way just through turns one and two now. Sainz couldn't quite get past Russell on that occasion, even with the advantage uh, of DRS. Here's Russell's teammate. Change his strategy. Uh, copy Lucio, we're just uh, waiting for the window to clear. I think that's an order from Lewis Hamilton, not a suggestion change this strategy and uh, yeah not mincing his words there is Lewis Hamilton not happy out there or, and struggling on the, the hard compound of tyre he's now fallen two seconds uh, behind Carlos Sainz and he's got Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin closing in rapidly eight tenths the Spaniard is down the inside of the hairpin further up Sainz takes a much tighter line trying to get a better exit to make the move on George Russell is he going to be hang out to dry in the approach to Spoon much like like he was a lap ago when he overtook Russell's teammate Lewis Hamilton. Russell doesn't quite squeeze him as much into the left-hander of Spoon. Signs down the inside and through on Russell. Signs up to sixth now. Russell uh, up to fifth, I should say. Russell down to sixth. Then it's Hamilton, Alonso, Piastri. And Magnussen, who's holding on, hasn't pitted yet inside the top ten. And those are the points-paying positions. Hamilton is, you can see him in the background from this battle. Every time he applies that throttle out the corner, he's getting huge snaps of oversteer as Max Verstappen's just set the fastest lap of the race, a 135.617. And that is on current pace to, I guess, the fight that he's got with, if he has got a fight, Sergio Perez. He's uh, over a second quicker than Perez at the moment. And uh, more than that, compared to Carlos Sainz, who, of course, was, was battling on that last lap. More misery for Lewis Hamilton, who is dropping like a stone through this field. He's just been overtaken by Fernando Alonso with the aid of DRS down into turn one. Alonso now up into seventh in that Aston Martin. Hamilton now down into eighth and already a second behind Alonso after a few corners. And Hamilton just a few moments ago on the radio asking the team point blank to change this strategy. He's out there on the hard compound of tyres, as is his teammate. They switch to the hard under the red flag conditions but Russell's up in sick having a, a slightly better time of it but not by much Jenny yeah if you look at what the um, tire twisters were coming into this uh, race uh, Mercedes had two sets of the hard tire and only one set of the medium whereas you look at the uh, Red Bulls they had two sets of the medium only one set of the hard team radio Ocon okay so we need to push now please push now uh, yeah pushing what are you talking about that's Ocon being told to push and they're saying, well, he is pushing. He's down in 16th at the moment. His teammate Gasly is the only car uh, behind him in 17th. And we've also just seen a move at Sergio Perez getting through on Lando Norris to take third place as he now makes his way towards turn one. Perez third, Norris fourth. Sorry, Jenny. That's OK. The McLarens also happen to choose two hards in one medium. So I think that's playing out on track now. And you have to think ahead of the game, don't you? And no one knew the temperatures were going to be like this. They're having to react as you see them. Pit stop for George Russell, who gets the call to come in and swaps his hard for another set of hards. 2.6 second pit stop uh, for George Russell. And I would expect, if he's just come in, that his teammate might well be in. No, they don't call in Hamilton either. He stays out for another lap. Hamilton desperate to change his strategy, staying out for the time being in seventh. He's got Piastri now all over the back of him in the McLaren. Russell will feed out in ninth spot. Magnussen has finally come into the pits as well. It's been 
a steady race for the Danish driver uh, in the Haas. He was up into the top ten. He's now in the pits uh, along with Stroll, Bottas, Sergeant, Sonoda. It's actually side-by-side -side action out of the pits between Magnussen and Stroll. Stroll getting the better of the Haas driver, although it was very close. Magnussen almost dipping a wheel across the white line on the pit lane exit. Uh, but Stroll very aggressive there on the exit. Sonoda hasn't pitted. That uh, bolted him up into, uh, well, he has, but he bolted up into 11th in front of Ocon. Uh, make that in front of Stroll, then Ocon, Magnussen 14th, Bottas 15th, Sargent 16th, Gasly 17th and last. But it's a tight scrap uh, from 11th through to 15th, 16th position at the time being, all within a second of each other. No points up for grabs, but certainly pride at stake. Hamilton now being called into the pits, which is what I expected. Even Oscar Piastri was getting a handful of hoes to I tell you what, the cars don't look great on this hard tyre. It is the hardest tyre available uh, out of all tyres that we have available in Formula 1. And they're not looking very, very nice out there at the moment. Uh, it is the, uh, we have the, hard, the hardest tyres in the range being brought uh, here this weekend. Pit lane, stop, pit stop for Lewis Hamilton, 2.6 seconds in and out, finally getting rid uh, of uh, his uh, hard compound tyres that he put on under the safety car, uh, under the red flag, I should say, uh, and he feeds out. We're just getting another look of the uh, pit stops between those midfield runners and you've got the salva of Bottas just being fed out behind the Haas of Magnussen, the Williams of Sargent, Sonoda's at the head of the field Stroll comes out side by side well done, thank you, top, top job guys top job, good and that is exceptional work from the RB team. All of that, that gaggle of cars, Sonoda, Stroll, Magnussen, Bottas, Sargent, all came in at the exact same time. But RB, with the quickest pit stop of the lot, Sonoda was behind that gaggle of cars. And within the space of two seconds, he's jumped them all in the pit lane. Fantastic teamwork. Yep, great job there by the mechanics. Lance Stroll. He's been noted for pit lane infringement. Now, he was released alongside one of the Hasses, as I, I believe it was, uh, and he continued to drive in the slow lane. Now, there's two lanes in the pit lane. There's a fast lane, uh, which if you're just making your way through the pit lane, either to your, your, your box or on to the exit, you stay in the fast lane. And then there is the slow lane which you can, can pull in if you want to go slower to then get into your box but uh, he was on his way out of the pits and continued to drive in the slow lane because he was alongside I think it was yeah Kevin Magnussen but uh, that's under investigation that'll be had a look at as George Russell now sets the fastest lap but a, a good job by Charles Leclerc on these medium tyres Harry sensational I mean, the yeah. step he's pulling on the, 23 laps on the medium does this mean that really He's, he's trying a one-stop. I mean, potentially, if, if he's able to, to go over, I would say so. We're nearly approaching the halfway point now. I'd expect him to be coming into the pits very shortly because the estimated, you could say, life of the medium tyre was around about 25 to 27 laps. And we're on lap 25 at the moment. Uh, he's getting a little bit of a wobble as he applies the throttle out of spoon, but uh, it doesn't. The Ferrari, his Ferrari, doesn't look nowhere near as bad as some of those on the the hard tyre that we've seen. No, it's uh, a sensational stint so far for the Monegasque racer, who has got Sergio Perez though in the other Red Bull all over the back of him as they come through the final chicane. Uh, does Leclerc stay out for another lap? He does, uh, but he may well find himself behind the Red Bull come the end of this straight the Mexican Red Bull driver Sergio Perez has DRS the rear wing flap opens Perez tries to move to the outside but Leclerc manages to keep in front for the time being just traffic and the degradation that's Hamilton asking, how did I lose so much time being told? Just traffic and degradation. He came into the pits a couple of laps ago, got rid of uh, the set of hard compound tyres. He was point blank asking his team to change the strategy that he was on. They called him into the pits and they've put him back out there on another uh, set of hard compound of tyres. He's down in ninth at the moment. It's lap 26 of 53 uh, of uh, the Japanese Grand Prix. And coming out of the second Degna, Leclerc runs deep into the gravel on the exit. That allows Perez through, but a mistake there. 
from the Ferrari driver, puts Lando Norris all over the back of him. This is the battle now for third. Perez skates through up into second, but Leclerc then, who is going the longest stint he can possible on a set of medium compound tyres, coming in to the second Degna, the right-hander, runs in deep, forced out wide, dips a wheel into the gravel. I know where our box is, that. Why so early? And that was Lando Norris's radio being told to pit. Norris questioning that reasoning. It's quite early. He's on the hard compound of tyre. Uh, but Leclerc now trying to recover after that off. So Perez getting an easy pass out of that one. He gets back up into second. It's a Red Bull 1-2. Leclerc in third. I wonder if his tyre's just screaming enough now at the end of lap 27. Indeed they are. As he comes out of the uh, chicane, he peels into the right-hand side. The pit lane entry to pit. Because of the threat from Russell. Norris uh, Norris told, told to pit as uh, Leclerc slams on the brakes, locks up, coming into the pit lane to make sure he hits the pit limiter as they both get serviced. Leclerc out in front of Norris, so that puts signs Alonso and Piastri through in third, fourth and fifth. Leclerc will feed out. Will Norris get ahead of Russell? No, he won't. So that worry of being overtaken by Russell has come true. Russell all over the back of Charles Leclerc making their way out through the exit of turn two as they now make their way up through the S curves of three, four and five on the approach to Dunlop curve. Leclerc then screaming enough of his medium compound of tyres, a sensational stint. 20, uh, just under 27 laps on that uh, tyre compound. Uh, he feeds out in sixth, Russell in seventh, Norris and McLaren responding to a fast charging Russell, also coming into the pits, being jumped by Russell, who is in now seventh. Norris is eighth, but well within Russell's reach. This is another look, Alice, of uh, Charles Leclerc running out wide in the second Degna and just going, going in deep into the corner. Yeah, he did just look like he just ran out a little bit of grip, possibly went in a little bit too hot as well. I feel like I've done the commentator's curse there in saying how well he was doing on those stint of tyres and how planted that Ferrari looked, but uh, a trend that you often see through that corner. But he's doing a, a solid job considering where he started. Uh, let's Lando Norris is a, who he's surrounded now having a, a battle with so the battle essentially we've, we've got here is for around about sixth place as Norris is on the back of Russell now he will have the aid of DRS and I expect a, a nice little battle now going down into turn one but Leclerc starting further down and now he's he start, he's around Lando Norris who started much higher up as Lando Norris having look round the outside of turn one lovely move to take up into seventh place from George Russell so great stuff from Lando really braved it round the outside many times we've seen that go wrong but not for Lando makes the moves as Lando Norris up into seventh spot his next target will be Charles Leclerc in six so he's working out well for Charles Leclerc and that Ferrari who uh, started down in eighth spot now and has made his way up into sixth and that's a net advantage in front of Norris for the time being but Norris is fast charging now one and a half seconds behind Leclerc lap 28 of 53 Verstappen leads by ten and a half seconds from his teammate Sergio Perez signs Alonso Piastri the top five Leclerc Norris Russell Hamilton Hulkenberg the top ten Sonoda Stroll Magnussen Bottas Sarge at the top 15, Ocon and Gasly, uh, seven, 16th and 17th, and they are the 17 remaining runners with no Joe Guan Yu, no Daniel Ricciardo, and no Alex Albon, all retiring from this race. You're listening to live coverage on BBC Radio 5 Live of the Japanese Grand Prix with myself, Harry Benjamin, racing driver Alice Powell and Jenny Gann. Yes, I've just spoken to Pirelli, and they reckon that Leclerc, as you said, Harry, is on a one-stop strategy. They're saying has done really great management of those medium tyres to get them to 28 laps around Suzuka. Um, and now I'm just looking at the gaps. So he's currently P6, um, and it takes about 22 seconds for a pit stop. So that means he'll jump up to around about fourth place, uh, if I got that maths right. Third place, maybe. So could we see that's a battle that's the battle. And they're desperately trying to get him a decent race result and maybe to get him on the podium. He's closing down that gap now. Yeah, but the two Ferraris battling hard in the long run. Signs currently uh, in third. 
And this is a battle between those two and that final podium spot. Norris will try to keep in the running for it as best he can. Uh, it's signs in third. Alonso staying out uh, in fourth uh, on the medium compound attire at the moment. Fairly quiet race from Alonso, who's just been uh, uh, started uh, this race uh, in fifth uh, and uh, has shown some decent pace. Uh, Piastri fifth at the moment. Leclerc, Norris, Russell ahead of Hamilton in ninth, who's uh, kind of a little bit in no man's land at the moment. He's three and a half seconds back from his teammate Russell, but he's uh, 20 seconds ahead of Nico Hülkenberg, who uh, had a rough restart to the Japanese Grand Prix after an amazing initial start on the uh, first lights out. Hülkenberg in 10th for the moment, having not pitted, and then the battle behind. Sonoda keeping Stroll at bay. Seven tenths between those two. Magnussen a further couple of seconds back in 13th. Then it's Bottas and Sergeant Nip and Tuck behind for the top 15 positions. Lap 30 of 53. Verstappen then quietly out in front on his own. Where are the closest battles at the moment? We're now in that part of the race where we're just waiting to see how it all pans out over the next 20 or so laps. Leclerc in the Ferrari with an absolutely mega stint to stay out as long as he could on that medium set of compound tyres. We're expecting a one-stop strategy from him. He's now pitted and put on the hard compound of tyres. Signs his teammate is in third. And we're expecting a battle here between the two Ferraris uh, once it all plays out uh, towards the end of this race. That final podium spot is the one that we are watching like a hawk. Lando Norris hasn't given up hope either, but he's not making the inroads on Charles Leclerc that he needs to. 1.2 seconds behind the Monegasque in seventh at the moment with Russell, Hamilton and Hülkenberg behind rounding out the top ten. I just still on my Leclerc watch and what they're doing at Ferrari. Leclerc needs a boost, doesn't he? He's had two poor rounds. Let's listen to Leclerc. It dropped. Everyone in front needs to stop again. Probably music to Leclerc's ears. Exactly. So Leclerc, knowing that everyone needs to stop, will be battling against Sergio Perez. He'll clear signs. Science will come out on fresh tyres, so that'll be the battle for third place. Are Ferrari giving him that boost? Was that the option they needed, wanted? It, it's really interesting that they've changed this strategy and he, obviously he's done a great job on his tyres, but this is impressive from Ferrari, but are they playing it to Leclerc's favour? I mean, I wouldn't say so. I think because signs were starting further up, they, they had to play it a little bit safer just in case anything happened sort of up, up the front end. Leclerc, you could essentially have nothing to lose. He was starting down in, in, in eighth place. But I think he's just done such a good job with managing those medium tyres that it sort of allowed him to... to to, to do this one start, but that's what he's going to end up doing. So, as you said, the battle's really going to be for that final podium spot between his teammate as Oscar Piastri is still continuing to struggle on those hard tyres, yet to pit uh, again, unlike his teammate Lando Norris, as he has a lock-up into the final chicane. Gets away with it, though. But we've got a good battle on our hands for this for the final spot on the podium. And isn't it going to be great seeing two Ferraris battle it out around uh, this incredible circuit? Well, we've seen that happen before. Uh, last year in Monza, those two Ferraris going absolutely hell for leather uh, between each other, fighting hard. Team principal Fred Vasseur allowing that to happen. Absolutely fantastic. We'll be treated to something similar in the closing stages of this race. The Claire is currently down in sixth. And everybody in front of him does need to pit again. We put Verstappen aside. He's got an outright advantage leading this race at the moment by uh, 11 and a half seconds. Teammate Sergio Perez, though, it, 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 he could well jump Perez uh, and fight, fight for second. Here is signs. Max lap time is 6.8. Checo 7.1. Yeah, faster than Checo. Keep pushing. And that was signs his radio music to his ears that uh, he is faster than Perez in front of him. Five seconds, the gap between Sergio Perez and Carlos Sainz for second and third. As the sun continues to shine down, a little bit overcast as it's uh, getting later in the day in Suzuka. The cherry blossom trees out in full bloom. Hottest temperatures we've seen all weekend at the moment. Air temperature just over 21 degrees, track temperature 36 and a half degrees. Tire degradation higher than expected coming into this weekend despite those lower temperatures. 
We're hosting the Japanese Grand Prix much earlier in the season than we ever have done before. Normally it's in, in October in the latter part of the year. Now it's been bumped up the calendar in April. And it's lap 32 of 53. While we watch that battle, sorry, Alice, for the podium positions, there's some nice battling still going down outside the points, but uh, 13th and 14th being hotly contested between Magnussen and Bottas. Magnussen with the advantage for the time being. Just looking at the lap times between Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris, both doing a 136.2, uh, so they're, and they're still pretty close together as well. The gap only 1.5 seconds. Leclerc is now approaching the rear end of Oscar Piastri. I wonder if Piastri is going to do his absolute best to, to slow down Charles Leclerc and... Uh, help pretty much his teammate Lando Norris who uh, is starting to slowly slowly close the gap on Charles Leclerc and as I say that Oscar Pitts yeah lots of turbulence down this come with that was Russell on the radio as Piastri comes into the pits lots of turbulence what is he meaning by that on the back straight well, he's not floating we're not it's not like you're getting on your, your aeroplane yeah. and uh, having that turbulence it, it's basically just the wind uh, battling around his his helmet and the ride of the car i'm just looking at the wind speed it has picked up ever so slightly from, from earlier on um you can do stuff with the this is sort of a windshield effectively that they put on the front of the cars belt uh, helmet which george russell wears they can also make adjustments but but clearly uh, he feels that he's getting some lift under his helmet and that's not nice because it's pulling on your chin strap effect effectively which is keeping the helmet on your head and that's not very nice feeling when that's pulling up uh, against your your chin against your throat sorry alice just almost a, a carbon copy incident of what happened between daniel ricardo and alex alvin on lap one of this race this time between nico holkenberg in the house and yuki sonoda coming through the exit at turn two running out wide as they made their way through the left hander of three they live to fight another day and Sonoda carrying huge speed makes his way around the outside as they make their way up through four and five. Sonoda now up and back into the top ten looking to score points for the first time in his home Grand Prix. Cheered on by the crowd. Sonoda up into tenth. Hulkenberg down into eleventh. Pit stops happening though. This time it's Sergio Perez who is called into the pits to get rid of his medium compound attire and put on the hard. That promotes Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc up into second and third game on as Alonso comes in and also puts on the set of hard compound tyres yeah nice smooth stop there 2.1 for Perez 2.4 for Fernando Alonso and Alonso is going to bleed out just in front of Oscar Piastri who will have slightly more tyre temperature than that of Fernando Alonso but it's worked quite nicely so Leclerc now sitting in the podium positions of course we have got others to pit in front we're just seeing a replay of a battle between Bottas uh, reporting weaving from Magnussen copy copy we will report and between him and Magnussen so Bottas not particularly happy and yeah Magnussen is weaving to essentially break the toe but going into that braking zone at turn one it was fine margins whether he left enough room for, for Bottas there on the left hand side so essentially you are only meant to make one movement and if you do move back to the left hand side of the track if you pull to the right hand side of the track to defend turn one you have got to, to leave racing room as Max Verstappen now enters the pits Harry he does indeed. The leader of the race comes in on the end of lap 35. Uh, just on that weaving, Magnussen's got history of that at this very track. If you remember back to 2018, with Charles Leclerc behind in a Sauber, um, getting oh so close and making contact to the back of Magnussen as he weaved in the straights. But as you say, into the braking zone, he didn't change his position. Verstappen into the pits, feeds out in second. Carlos Sainz takes over the lead of this race. Sergio Perez, the other Red Bull, making his way now past Lando Norris into turn one with the help of DRS. The Mexican now up into fourth spot. So Sainz hasn't come in for another pit stop. We're expecting him to do so. 
uh, has five seconds over Max Verstappen, who has just pitted and come back out again on the hard. Charles Leclerc is third. We are not expecting him to come into the pits again. He is third on the hard compound of tyre ahead of Sergio Perez in fourth. Lando Norris is fifth. Then comes Russell, Hamilton, Alonso, Piastri and Sonoda. That's the top ten. Those are your point scoring positions. So right now, Alice, it's looking like it's going Leclerc's way in this final battle for the podium spot. It certainly does, Harry. With the gap between the two Ferraris. Yeah, let's box tour. I think I'm going to lose time here. Copy understood. This is on new medium. Let's see. The more we extend, the better it is. But stay on our toes. Yeah, so Sainz is saying, look, I think we need to box soon. I'm going to lose time. I'm sure he's wise enough to it that he knows his battle is probably going to end up being with his teammate and the gap between the two drivers at the moment. 12.6 seconds between Sainz and Leclerc. And as we've often mentioned, a pit stop around here. Loss is around about 22 seconds. So it'll be a lot of work to do for Carlos Sainz. Yeah, just looking at the driver tracker, they're just about to get into a whole load of traffic. So Sainz uh, at the start of this race, they've just overtaken the back markers. They're having to do it again. It's tough down there. Perez makes the move on Charles Leclerc down the inside into turn one. Perez now up into third. Leclerc now down to four, but with a pit stop imminent for our race leader as it currently stands, Carlos Sainz, who uh, is out there and thinking he's going to lose a lot of time out in front. Oh. And actually, what's going to lose him more time is we're just hearing a replay of him uh, late on the brakes, locking up and having to cut the final chicane. That's not going to do him any good, but he cuts across it and uh, doesn't come into the pits, goes for another lap, still out there. But Stappen then will effectively take over the net, the net lead in front of Perez, who uh, has just set the fastest lap time as well. So Perez, a man on a mission as it currently stands, is signed to, top, to come into the pits at the end of this lap. Leclerc then will go a net third. And depending on when si where Signs feeds out, uh, with a pit loss, as you say, that's about 22 seconds, He'll uh, have the disadvantage of track position, but he will have some fresher rubber to try and carve his way through the field. He had a little bit of a lockup, but I think he actually probably gained time from that because he didn't really slow down to skip the, the chicane. Uh, I must say, I have done that at times myself. I've gone, oops, I had a lockup. I'll just skip across here. But uh, he's got away with, with that one as he enters the pits now, slams on the brake. He'll push on the pit lane speed limiter, trundles down the pit lane does feel so slow when you come in at, at racing speed as the Ferrari pit crew tend to the car on goes a set of the hard tyres and that's a pretty smooth stop 2.9 for Carlos Sainz not the fastest we've seen today I think at the moment that's from Max Verstappen a two second stop and out the pits and where's he going to slot in Harry all the way down in seventh place yeah behind the two Mercedes so Verstappen then retakes the lead of this race Ahead of Perez, seven and a half second the gap between the two Red Bulls. Leclerc now in third. He's got 1.7 seconds over Lando Norris. Russell fifth, Hamilton sixth. Signs back out of that Ferrari on a fresh set of hard compound tyres in seventh. So he will be trying to make up as many positions as he can over the next uh, few laps to try and challenge his teammate and Lando Norris for those final podium positions. Uh, Alonso, Piastri and Sonoda make up the top ten. Magnussen is 11th. Bottas 12, Stroll 13, Hulkenberg 14, Sargent the top 15, Ocon and Gasly the two Alpines 16th and 17th. Last of this race is uh, Gasly with no Joe Guanyu, the Sauber having to retire uh, with issues uh, to the gearbox. Daniel Ricciardo and Alex Albon uh, suffering a big incident on lap one. That brought out the red flag for about 20 minutes or so. Both drivers out of the car and OK in a race around this iconic Suzuka circuit in Japan. A driver and fans' favourite. The sun beats down, the cherry blossoms are in full bloom and a race that has been dictated by tyre strategy. Signs now just fed out of the pits and already 
right onto the back of Lewis Hamilton's rear wing as his teammate George Russell is told to pit. So that will be an easy one for Sainz to pick up, along with Hamilton with DRS, a little bit of toe. The Spaniard closes up to the back of Hamilton, moves to the inside, breaks for turn one, and the Ferrari driver is through. Up into fifth spot. Hamilton then down to sixth. Alonso, Piastri make their way through as Russell will feed out in ninth spot. So we've got quite a bit of a gap uh, to Yuki Tsunoda's RB, who is currently all on his own in 10th spot. He's got six and a half seconds uh, to Kevin Magnussen in the Haas, who is 11th at the moment. So Tsunoda on course and looking to try and get his first point scored in his home Grand Prix. So now will be the time for Sainz to absolutely push that Ferrari to the limit. He's on the hard tyre. Uh, he needs to just make sure that he's getting the cleanest of laps possible to really close that gap down to his teammate. He's got Norris that's uh, sandwiched in between, so he will have some traffic. But the gap at the moment between signs and Leclerc is around about eight seconds as Lando Norris runs slightly Ooh. wide. Again, it's that curve on the exit he of Degna 2. It. He did, and then... He got a kick of oversteer. Nice save there from Lando Norris because you can quickly be approaching uh, the tyre barrier on either side there. So good save from, from Lando. So this will be interesting now to, to keep an eye on the times between uh, the two Ferraris. So last lap, 136.0 from Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz, a 133.9. So certainly doable for Carlos Sainz, but there's one thing catching, overtaking's another. And let us know how the tyres are. Yeah, the tyres are still good. Hamilton on the radio there asking to extend his stint, or should we extend uh, that stint? Feeling that the tyres are good now, so Hamilton feeling slightly better out there. He's currently sixth, uh, 3.8 seconds back from Carlos Sainz. He's got just over four seconds uh, in front of Alonso, who is behind him, the two former McLaren teammates, sixth and seventh. Piastri, though, closing in in the second McLaren onto the back of Fernando Alonso, about half a second between those two. Russell set out from the pits in ninth, Sonoda the top ten. And actually just on the exit of that second Degna where uh, Norris just went wide and, and skateboarded across the red and white uh, curving, you've got to be a little bit careful because there's a little bit of astroturf to the left side of that, uh, which has actually come up uh, and is starting to flail around a bit. So last thing you need is that to be picked up uh, uh, by a car, sucked up underneath it or into one of the side pods of the side inlets uh, can really affect uh, a driver's race so in the closing stages lap 40 of 53 mistakes ideally none but kept to a minimum hopefully we hope so to keep this race underway Leclerc now has increased his pace 135.6 but still not enough compared to Carlos Sainz and Lewis Hamilton has uh, just come into the pit now so he was pretty happy with that hard tire uh, much more happy about it than it seems from his previous set of hard tires they're waiting there for a set of medium tires for him and i wonder if he was slightly happier on this set of hards because of the air temperature and the track temperature so track temperature has dropped from 40 degrees down to 34 and that will just help with the temperature of the tires so maybe a slight overheating issue uh, for the mercedes but he's back out nine seconds adrift now from his teammate george russell who's on the medium tire so both mercedes are, are the only drivers at the moment on the medium tire in the top 10. yep russell eighth Hamilton ninth jenny Stop looks slow. It, it looks did, like yeah. the wheel gun got slightly locked up on the front right, and it just took a while to disengage. So not the pit stop that they were hoping for for Hamilton. No, not at all. Uh, those two Mercedes then. Eighth and ninth, Sonoda 10th, lap 40 of 53. We're keeping a track of the battle for the final podium position, currently occupied by Charles Leclerc. His last lap around was a 135.6. Lando Norris behind him was a 135.7. Carlos Sainz was on a 134.4. Carlos Sainz on slightly fresher rubber than the two cars ahead of him, closing in at a rate of knots. How quickly can he capitalize on his fresher rubber before the degradation starts to hit in, though, Alice? Now, just looking slightly further ahead, if I was in Lando Norris's shoes, he's 1.6 seconds off 
Leclerc doing fairly similar lap times last lap now just a tenth between those two drivers in terms of pace that's Leclerc and Norris here from Sainz on a, on a race here or what? yes we are for a podium so Leclerc, uh, Sainz being told he's on for a podium but if I was Norris I wouldn't really fight Sainz too hard because then I'd try and latch on the back of, of Sainz, who of course is on a fresher set of tyres, and hope that he will eventually catch, Le catch Leclerc, and I don't think Leclerc's gonna wave his teammate on by, and then there could be a little bit of battling there, and if you are battling, that loses, of course it loses time, as we're just seeing a replay now of the slow pit stop from Lewis Hamilton, the front right tyre uh, was slow coming off, got a little bit stuck there, but he was underway, 3.3 seconds that stop. So we'll, we'll be interested to see what uh, approach Lando Norris takes, but that, that'll be my approach because he, he's not going to be able to catch uh, Leclerc unless he essentially has the help from Sainz. Try and do a, a, a little bit of what Sainz did in, in Singapore and, and play around with that DRS strategy just to try and stay within him, although Norris will be hoping Sainz keep, keeps him in that one second. Uh, uh, here's Hamilton down in ninth. Just a gap ahead, lost even more time. Yeah, it looks like we uh, lost a bit of time on the inlap. So Lewis Hamilton then, being told, lost a bit of time on the end lap. They had a slow pit stop as well. He's uh, a few seconds behind uh, his teammate. 8.5 seconds in the gap now. Ninth place. Verstappen though leads, looking on course to take his third Suzuka win in a row. Perez second, Leclerc holding on to that final podium position for the time being, but with battles with Norris and signed at uh, the top five, Alonso, Piastri, Russell, Hamilton and Sonoda, the top ten. We've got a yellow flag out on track at the moment. I think it might be Logan Sargent, who was stopped on the exit of the second Degna, and there's a little bit of smoke coming up from the gravel. I wonder if he's gone into the wall. We haven't seen it, but he's oh. now reversing out of the gravel onto the track, exactly on the exit of the second Degna. He's got Alonso and Piastri approaching, and he pours oh. gravel all over the circuit as he gets going again. But I have to say, that is impressive work to go into the gravel, reverse out of it, and get back going again. Sargent drops all the way down to 17. His car, his car covered in gravel. The tire is absolutely ruined. But we are back to green flag racing as the Williams team prep to receive Sargent back into the pits. Really, just that'll be disappointing for him. So we're riding on board now to see what exactly happened. This is where we've seen a lot of drivers make a mistake. Oh, so he clobbers the first curb into Degnas, which puts him slightly wide and unsettles the car going into the second one he snatches that inside front right sails off into the gravel does a good job to to get it stopped and the thoughts well do you know what i'm going to try and reverse this out and those behind him would have been warned i'm sure i would like to think by uh, their teams that there was a reversing williams but that has now dropped uh sergeant from 15th down to 17th he was a good 15 seconds clear of esteban ocon he's now 16.6 .6 seconds behind Pierre Gasly, so that'll be real disappointment for, for Sargent. Yeah, and not what they need down at Williams, and another mistake too in a weekend for Logan Sargent once again, under pressure the American now in his second season has made it back to the pits, and received by the team they put on a set of soft compound tyres, soft compound tyres to see him uh, go to the end of this race Verstappen leads, 10 seconds between himself and Perez, and the fight is on for the podium, Leclerc, Norris and Sainz battling it out the two Ferraris, nip and tuck, and then now all within the same shot little lock up for Lando Norris coming into the hairpin that puts Sainz within half a second of him Leclerc is only a few more seconds up the row Sainz can smell a podium here can't he Jenny yes it, uh, nine laps fresher tyres Sainz has got he's managing to claw back well he needs to overtake Lando Norris who pitted at exactly the same time as Charles Leclerc who's in third and as you say the battle for third now with 10 laps to go is hotting up that's not going to help Lando's tyres having that lock up there so under pressure let's see how he's going to defend no Carlos Sainz trying to distract the McLaren driver going into that final bit of the chicane and Lando's not got a great exit out of the second to last corner he is he going to defend is the question no he doesn't so he sits on the racing line lets Carlos Sainz go through now Lando needs to Hook a line on the back of that Ferrari to tow him along and hope that uh, he able he's going to be able to stick with him. It's going to be a tough, tough ask, but he's.
the only other hope is that these two Ferraris battle it out, which uh, allows Lando Norris to join the party. The battle is on then for the final step on the podium for the Japanese Grand Prix between the two Ferrari drivers. Charles Leclerc currently with the advantage on track, but Carlos Sainz rapidly closing with a tyre advantage. It's Max Verstappen who leads Sergio Perez in this race. Leclerc, Sainz and Norris now the top five. Uh, coming up uh, from 8 o'clock on Five Live, the latest news and sports headlines on Sunday breakfast. It's also uh, a big day of sports from half 11 uh, this morning, Scottish Premiership football action. Big game, Rangers versus Celtic. Then later this afternoon, half past three, Man United v Liverpool. And one more to go for the podium. That's coming up today across Five Live as Carlos Sainz is told in the closing stages of the Japanese Grand Prix, one more to go to get himself onto a podium. But that one more to go, Jenny, is his teammate, Charles Leclerc. And are Ferrari going to let them race? It certainly sounded from that message from the engineer that they would. And do not lose time with Sainz. We are racing Norris. Nah, let them race. Well, Leclerc is told, no, you're not racing him. Let him through if he is quicker. They've had to just na navigate a little bit of traffic uh, in the form of the Alpine of uh, Esteban Ocon. So they've now both got through. The two Ferraris sharing the same bit of track now. Uh, just about a second between them. Leclerc currently in third. Signs down in fourth. Signs looking to uh, follow up his sensational win at the Australian Grand Prix with Max Verstappen retiring from that race and Sainz coming back after his surgery to remove his appendix and what's been an amazing story so far this season had to miss the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and you could argue that if Sainz had taken part in the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and scored points, uh, he may well have come into this round leading the World Championship. Uh, Sainz looking strong in what will be his final season racing for the Scuderia before he makes way at the end of 2024 for the signing of seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton. But Sainz doing everything he can to put himself in the shop window for a prime seat in 2025. He's seven-tenths Make that six tenths, closing in to the back of his teammate Charles Leclerc in the run down to the fast left-hander of 130R. He's going to line this one up on the start, finish straight with the aid of DRS, the drag reduction system, the rear wing flat flies open when you are within a second of the car in front, which signs absolutely is. His teammate Leclerc has been told, don't fight, don't lose too much time. That rear wing flat flies open for Carlos Sainz. He tucks into the back of Leclerc, who moves to the inside. That will force Sainz round the outside slightly later on. On the brakes Leclerc not fighting it too hard but didn't make it completely easy for his teammate signs through and up into third and the final place on the podium as he completes and tries to get closer to Sergio Perez who's in second Leclerc now his fight will be with Lando Norris who is a couple of seconds behind him it's Verstappen Perez signs now third Leclerc Norris the top five I don't actually think the battle is going to be with Lando Norris for Leclerc now. Last lap, 135.7 from Leclerc, 136.2. So Lando's suddenly really, really dropped off uh, the pace he was setting a few more laps ago. As the sound you can hear now is riding on board with Lance Stroll, who has a look up the inside. Dunlop curved there and up into 12th place, overtaking Valtteri Bottas. So a move forward. So we have got, if you want some, some closer battles, there is some closer battles further down the field, Harry. I know you get super excited. I these. love a battle for 11. Especially the constructors. What was it last year? Seven. You got excited. Always yeah, the there battle we go. for seven. Absolutely loving it. Yuki Tsunoda currently winning out that battle. He's in 10th, holding on to that final spot on the uh, in the points. Magnussen in 11th. Stroll, as you say, now up into 12th. Hulkenberg just sweeps past Bottas into turn one. Hulkenberg 13th, Bottas now at 14th. Ocon and Alpine uh, with Gasly 15th and 16th. Sargent after his off in the uh, gravel into the second. Degna now down in 17th and quite detached from the field with Joe Guanyu retiring with issues along with Daniel. Ricardo in the RB and Alex Albon in the Williams coming together on lap one and causing the initial red flag which now seems so long ago 47 laps later still a few more to run 53 laps in total around this Suzuka circuit 18 turns and it's a punishing track you can see how much the drivers love it 
You're rewarded for your success, but you are punished for the smallest mistakes. And there are still battles to be won out in the closing stages of this race. Uh, the closest battle at the moment, Alice, is between sixth and seventh. It's Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin versus Oscar Piastri in the McLaren, who's in seventh. Yeah, getting very close there. Oscar will have the aid of DRS, of course, down the the main straight only one drs point here the detection is just after 130r so lando will be uh, sorry oscar will be hoping he'll be able to make his way up into sixth place and just looking at mercedes watch as well lewis hamilton last time around four tenths quicker than his teammate george russell so the gap is under five seconds now uh, coming down and down and down 4.9 seconds is the gap just risen up back to five seconds i don't think there'll be enough time for, for lewis to catch george but uh certainly there's enough time for oscar piastri to try and make his way past fernando alonso Lap 48 of 53, Verstappen leads Perez, signs with the fastest lap in third for Ferrari ahead of his teammate Leclerc, Norris the top five, Alonso under pressure for his sixth place in the final stages of the Japanese Grand Prix from Piastri in seventh, the two Mercedes line astern in eighth and ninth, Sonoda rounds out the top ten, Jenny. Yeah, I've been watching Piastri for a few laps now. He cannot get past Fernando Alonso in that Aston Martin, he is parking the bus. That's Lance Stroll saying it's unbelievable how, bar, how bad our speed is on the uh, straight. It's almost as if they're in is a different crying? category. He's just got through on Magnussen, though, with a nice move around the outside. It was in the corner, though, coming up through turn three and four. Stroll in 11th at the moment. Aston Martin brought upgrades, uh, quite, quite big upgrades this weekend. They trialled them out on Strolls in FP1 with a back-to-back, -back, uh, with Alonso not having the upgrades. Then they fitted them to Alonso's car, and Alonso getting the absolute maximum out of them. He qualified for this race in fifth, and Stroll had an absolute dreadful qualifying down in 16th and himself saying I just didn't have the pace in me to do it and right now though he is not happy not at home in that Aston Martin he's seven and a half seconds adrift of a point uh, from Yuki Tsunoda with five laps to go hello George Russell has just joined this battle between uh, Oscar Piastri and Fernando Alonso six tenths now the gap I don't know if Oscar's made a mistake actually because he's now dropped without dear uh, out of DRS range of Alonso and uh, that's allowed George Russell to really close the gap. Four tenths as they go through the detection zone there between uh, Russell and Piastri, who's really going to have the benefit of DRS uh, down the straight. Of course, the McLaren and the Mercedes, that's not their strongest point is straight line speed, but uh, having help of DRS is certainly going to help uh, George Russell, but not quite close enough to, to make any attempt to attack going into turn one. And is this a... Is this going to allow Lewis Hamilton to catch even quicker uh, into the, the back of George Russell? Let's have a little look at the lap time. So Hamilton, 134.9. Russell's last lap, 135.4. Piastri, 135.8 in the same time for Fernando Alonso. So maybe, maybe there is a little bit of hope for, for Lewis to, to catch this battle at the tail end of the race. Just a second covering sixth to eighth at the moment with Alonso providing a defensive masterclass to keep Piastri behind. And then Russell has closed in as they make their way through the hairpin. Of course, Russell might be thinking, well, I found myself behind, behind Alonso at the last race in the closing stages of this, this lap. And Alonso was given a penalty uh, for what the stewards deemed uh, to uh, not be quite uh, correct driving from him. Um, paraphrasing there, but he was given a, a drive-through penalty converted into a 20-second post-race penalty. And of course, that race ended with Russell in the wall trying to fight for the last few positions he could in this race. Piastri, though, is the first car in front of him, and he's closed right onto the back of the Australian. Russell's closer to Piastri is, uh, than Piastri is to Alonso as it currently stands. Piastri forced Ooh. to go defensive into the chicane. Russell plays the dummy. Late move to the inside for Russell. They touch wheels. Piastri has to cut the chicane. Piastri keeps the position. They both have DRS, but Russell, I think, will be feeling he's owed that position back. Piastri maintained it by cutting across the chicane, and in the run 
out to turn one. Piastri with his elbows out, dives to the inside, keeps Russell at bay. The battle for seventh just came alive in the space of a millisecond. Now I, but Piastri will say, well, I had nowhere to go. I was forced off track. George will say, well, I gave him enough room. He cut the chicane. But I wonder if this is crafty thinking from Fernando Alonso to control this battle behind. He knows he doesn't have to pace on the McLaren, and it was a late move, wasn't it? Yeah, there was contact. I think George uh, won't be owed the, the place back there. He, uh, he did make contact with Piastri. It was a really late move. Oscar did give him space on the inside and then George did make contact with the McLaren and, and sent him wide but I wonder I love Fernando Alonso when he, he's just so intelligent and so clever it, maybe there's not what's going on but I reckon that he's possibly almost backed uh, Oscar some way into Fana into George Russell because now Fernando's gone you know laughing up the road he's uh, opened up a slight gap you, you kids behind me you fight it out and I'll stay ahead uh, do you think that uh, that's going to be that's been noted by race control do you think that was more uh, Piastri coming keeping the position or Russell forcing a driver off the track I would say it was Russell forcing a driver off the track I think we have anywhere to go this time so I had the cup well, that's what yeah, Piastri... That was clear. He gave you no room there. Contact was made. Mm. They and uh, sort of Piastri's car, you could say, had a slight hop to the to the left. If there was gravel there, he probably would have got. He would have just gone straight through the gravel. So uh, luckily for Piastri, there was no gravel there. I wonder if we will hear George's thoughts, but we haven't so far. But Fernando has played into his hands certainly. And look who's approaching quite quickly. Okay, we've only got two laps remaining of this race, but now Lewis Hamilton uh, will be not far off the back of this battle here. 2.3 seconds is the gap at the moment. He's got a little bit of traffic of one of the Alpines in front of him but uh, they'll get out of the way. I think that was uh, Pierre Gasly moving out of the way, but Lewis, uh, he could possibly smell a little bit of blood here on his teammate. That's a great move though for Russell. Last minute, dummy inside. Got to be. Proper on, dummy, wasn't it? Yeah, got to be on the absolute edge coming into that chicane. Uh, that incident has been noted by race control, so we'll see if that escalates uh, to any kind of investigation. Uh, I think Piastri and uh, uh, McLaren uh, feeding back on the radio might have something to say about that. But lap 52 of 53, penultimate lap of racing around this Japanese Grand Prix. Verstappen looks like he's got this one in the bag and has done since the get-go. 12.9 seconds the gap he has out in front to his teammate Sergio Perez. Sainz is third, Leclerc, Norris the top five, Alonso is sixth. That battle still going on between Alonso, Piastri and Russell, six, seven and eight. Hamilton, a couple of seconds back, watching on from ninth. Sonoda holding on to the final points paying position at the moment in his home race. Stroll is 11th, Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Bottas and Ocon the top 15 with Gasly and Sargent making up the field of 17 remaining drivers. Joe Guanyu in the Sauber having to retire with issues. Uh, and uh, Daniel Ricciardo in the RB, the Williams of Alex Albon coming to blows on the exit uh, of turn two on the initial lights out. That caused a red flag. Both drivers in the wall, both drivers out and OK, but no longer able to take part in the race. That saw around a 20 minute or so red flag, which allowed everybody who wanted to have a free stop, a free tyre change as per the rules allow before we got this race restarted again from a standing start. We've had a couple of offs, uh, mainly in the form of Logan Sargent, who a few laps ago found himself deep into the second Degna. Didn't hit the wall, but managed to engage reverse and rejoin this race. But now he is plumb last, 17th of the drivers. And in this final lap then of the Japanese Grand Prix, Verstappen just showcasing his advantage. Has he got more in hand? Is he really pushing to the absolute extremes? He's just set the fastest lap to show what he's got in hand. Perez in second. Carlos Sainz looks like he's won that battle for the final podium position, following up a sensation, sensational Australian Grand Prix win. The closest battle on track is for this sixth place position with Alonso, Piastri and Russell fighting it out. Lock up for Piastri coming into the... And he runs deep and that puts him at risk coming out of the final corner 
Russell's going to get much better traction. Piastri peels to the inside. DRS for both drivers, but Russell carrying more momentum. He's going to have to go round the outside, down through turn one. Russell bides his time. Piastri makes a mistake in the final chicane, and that was all Russell needed to make the move. The Mercedes man up into seventh. Piastri down to eight. Yeah, he was ahead going into the corner for sure, wasn't he? It was George Russell. I said it was going to be a slam dunk, mainly just because that really affected Piastri's exit and uh, Russell was all over the back of the gearbox but here comes your race winner Harry into the final corner once again dominance displayed from Max Verstappen he didn't win last time out in, in Australia, but he wins in Japan, back on the top spot for Max Verstappen, who wins the Japanese Grand Prix. The Red Bull team celebrates in the pit wall. Sergio Perez will make it a 1-2 finish for Red Bull. And a wave to his mechanics and engineers as he crosses the line. Carlos Sainz will take the final podium place in third for Ferrari, following up his spectacular win in Australia. Leclerc fourth, Norris fifth, Alonso sixth, Russell seventh, Piastri eighth, Hamilton ninth, and Yuki Tsunoda, the Japanese home hero, gives all the fans something to get up on their feet and smile and cheer about as he takes one precious point for RB, the first time a Japanese driver has scored in the Japanese Grand Prix since Kamui Kobayashi took his podium back in 2012. That's show, Max. You have delivered on that. Really well done. Beautifully nourished. Yes. That was a very lovely race. The, the car just got better better to be honest throughout the race. Uh, well done. Really good result. Well done, Max. That was outstanding. Another 1-2 finish here on this home race as well. So uh, brilliant, brilliant weekend. Dominant throughout. Well done. Yeah, great team result. Really well done. Verstappen then as elated as uh, he usually is when he takes uh, a win, but making a point and getting back onto the top step after retiring last time around. 53 laps of the Japanese Grand Prix complete. Round four of the 2024 F1 season done and dusted. Verstappen wins in front of Perez. Sainz with the final spot on the podium in front of his teammate Leclerc. Norris, the top five. Alonso, Russell, Piastri, Hamilton, Sonoda with the final point in 10th. Hulkenberg, 11th. Stroll, Magnussen, Bottas, Ocon, the top 15. Gasly is 16th with Logan Sargent, 17th and last for Williams. Joe Guanyu retiring in this race. And after the big incident in lap one, seeing Daniel Ricciardo and Alex Albon both out of the race, that is your Japanese Grand Prix. Thank you very much. Some really good racing out there. Maybe it wasn't for first place and maybe Red Bull won again with a 1-2. But actually, through the field, there was some cracking racing. Sergio Perez. 1-2 in quali, 1-2 in the race. Tidy. Good job, guys. Nice to for the team. Well done, Checo. That's been a very, very strong weekend for you. Well done. Great, uh, great team performance. Honda's home race as well. So, uh, so yeah, fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Very, very, very happy for, for Honda and all these fans. Well done, team. Let's keep it up. And as Christian Horner, team principal of Red Bull, says, Honda celebrating, the fans are celebrating, they're all waving little flags. The atmosphere throughout the weekend at Suzuka has been and always is amazing and celebrating Red Bull's victory. It always is super special in Japan. The fans absolutely love it. And they might not have had a battle for the win, but there was certainly a great battle for the final place of the podium. And then at the end there, the battle between Fernando Alonso, George Russell, Oscar Piastri and Lewis Hamilton just missing out. He ended up 1.1 seconds behind Piastri in the end as Max Verstappen steps out of his car, climbs onto the top, lifts his arms. And the cheer you can hear, of course, will be from his very, very happy Red Bull team. Yeah, absolutely. Goes over to the engineers and mechanics and gives them a bit of a hug and a tap. Uh, Verstappen now leads the World Championship 77 points to Perez's 64. So order has been re-established in the uh, driver standings with uh, the two Red Bulls at the top, Leclerc and Sainz in third and fourth. They have, well, Leclerc's just dropped down that little bit. 
Sonoda celebrating as well. He's just stepped out of the car. And as you say, a Japanese driver scoring at home. He will be so happy for that. So relieved in a way. Yeah, he certainly will. And so are his team. And so they should be. It is always special having a good result at a home race. And it's not many times that we get to, the, to have a home race as, as a driver, especially racing in Formula 1, so he'll be hugely happy, and so will Charles Leclerc making his way from 8th on the grid all the way up into 4th place actually set her personal best on the last lap there, so uh, he'll be pleased as well. Just on that, that Sonoda obviously great drive from him, but that was a brilliant team effort because the pit stop was what really helped him, he was at the back of that midfield pack he was kind of 13th and 14th, but thanks to the quick pit stop for RB, he jumped about four cars in that pit stop allowing him to get that final points paying position so great teamwork there uh, for, for that really fierce fight in the in the bottom end of the, the championship standings and bearing in mind that that race did not start well for RB with their car crashed into the wall and Dan Ricardo out of the race I think that will also as you said Alice be a reward for all the mechanics and, and engineers who work on that car it's, it's one point is valuable these days it is points make prizes especially in the constructors championship and that's what the teams of course they want their driver to win the drivers championship but that's what they really care about um, and it makes a difference going down the line with wind tunnel time etc but uh, a good job from from Yuki Sonoda and like Harry said a top effort by by the team getting that pit stop done there's big smiles for for Max Verstappen asked being asked to stand by the the car he looks a little bit puzzled as he crouches down to have a, a nice photo for I'm not sure if that was a Red Bull fan or who it was I've never seen that Red Bull member of staff there but uh, they were t wanted to have a picture anyway well it's very nice of them to have a picture we like that uh, China two weeks time that's what we look ahead to obviously Verstappen is dominating this season he won't do the clean sweep because of last time in the retirement that he suffered in Australia but he will be looking to win every single race from now on and it's a very very long season he will longest in Formula 1 history but China's going to be a really interesting one we haven't been there since before Covid and the track hasn't hosted a whole lot of other kind of racing it's so green it could, it, the track, it's built on a former swamp site as well could when Harry says green, bumps. he's not it's talking not about the colour. Oh no, so green is in, there's, there's no running on it. It's dusty, it's, it's got all sorts of uh, foliage on it, uh, and uh, that will be quickly cleaned up by, as soon as we get track running. But uh, Pirelli, you saying they're not quite sure uh, what they're going to do when it comes to tyres. So a lot going on there. Uh, but uh, back in Japan, we can hear from our top three, starting with Carlos Sainz, who's talking to Mark Webber. Well, Carlos, this... Uh champagne feeling is on a bit of a roll mate after the uh tricky wedding obviously in saudi arabia with uh, with a health issue you're bouncing back mate you're absolutely on fire you must be happy with that today yeah uh i had a good race to be honest very happy because it was quite uh, quite tough out there with the with the degradation but said that then suddenly the the clouds came the degradation went a lot lower and suddenly i thought that yeah maybe one stop was quicker and we were on the two i had to overtake a lot of cars out there today and yeah, overtaking was tricky. Like always at Suzuka, you really need to nail the last chicane to get a good uh, run into turn one. I could finish my moves, but uh, it was tough out there. Yeah, good job, mate. So run us through the compound of tyres. Like how did the race in terms of, like you said, the track condition was moving around. But when you come back at after your last stop, did you think you could get all those moves done? You were still a little bit nervous until you arrived on them. Honestly, I thought it was on, but I thought it was going to be very difficult to get back into the fourth or P3. Uh, how tricky it was to overtake the Mercedes on the second stint and uh, how close was difficult was to follow. I knew I needed a, a very big uh, delta, you know, to, to approach uh, Lando and, and Charles. And in the end, we, we managed. Uh, I was quick on that hard tire. Uh, I really liked the, how the hard gave me a good feeling to push and I could, uh, yeah, um, get the moves done and get that podium. Just quickly, sprint race around the corner in China, different sort of uh, issues at that track in terms of how the car should perform, but Ferrari looks strong. I think it's going to be a tough weekend for everyone. I think going into a sprint to a track that we haven't been in four or five years, uh, only one hour of practice uh, is going to be a challenge. Might be resurface also, so it's going to be a, a good one. Uh, yeah, let's get a couple good weeks to keep training and keep recovering, and uh, I'll get uh, back in China flat out. Congratulations. Thank Good you. job, Carlos. Just go a little bit louder if you can, mate, for me. Yep. 
Mark Webber then doing the questioning and uh, signs with a worthy podium there. Speaking a little so, bit Joe, louder. Congratulations. Uh, a very, very strong afternoon. It was a tricky weekend to put together with the qualifying and then the front row, the restart. But it looked like a pretty uh, smooth afternoon for you and probably not quite enough for Max today, but a brilliant podium. Yeah, it was a, a good weekend for the team. Uh, first of all, I think obviously with the start, doing that restart again is always quite hard to keep the focus for such a long period of time. It worked all right. Um, my second start was a little bit better, but just not enough to get max. And um, I think uh, we paid the price a little bit because we were a little bit off balance on that first stint, which meant we couldn't keep it alive. Uh, we had to box and um, we were uh, undercut by, by Lando. Uh, and then I had to push too much on that yeah. medium stint. Um, but then on the hard stint, I was a lot more comfortable. The, the pace came back. But um, yeah, I think I, I suffered a bit from that first stint, a, a bit unbalanced. Mm -hmm. But you must be very encouraged, mate. The start of the season has gone very well for you. Lots of big points. Second in the championship now. So positive looking forward to yeah, China. Yeah, definitely. I think we are in a good momentum. I think. Uh, if, if you remember here last year was probably my worst weekend, so I think in, if we are strong in, in places like this with a lot of high-speed content, medium speed, I think we can be strong anywhere else. And uh, yeah, it's been a good weekend. Sergio, congratulations. <laughs> Bless you, Sergio. Um, second place man there speaking to uh, Mark Webber and we await for a race winner. Here we are again after one DNF last weekend uh, in, uh, well, in, in Melbourne but bang straight back with a pole position very very dominant victory congratulations how was it out there? Yeah, it was very, uh, very nice. I think uh, the, the critical bit was, of course, the start, to stay ahead. And after that, um, actually, the car just got better and better for me throughout the, the race. I don't know if it had to do maybe with the clouds coming in. But, uh, yeah, very nice. Everything just uh, went really well. Pit stops went well. Strategy, I think, worked out well. So uh, <laughs> couldn't have been any better. Yeah, brilliant reply, mate. You must be just stoked with the team again, coming out of the blocks in a new year in terms of it's pretty much unbeatable, obviously, apart from that reliability in Melbourne. In front of the Honda fans here as well, the Japanese support for you locally is tremendous. So there must be a big uh, feather in your cap this weekend. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, it was a little hiccup, of course, the last race, but uh, very happy that we are here back on top. Great fans in front of, you know, Honda as well. I mean, uh, yeah, it's fantastic, of course, to, to win here. But just a quick one, returning to China, haven't been there for a long time. Everyone's very excited to go back there. Sprint weekend. Uh, what are your expectations there in terms of the first sprint of the, of the year? Yeah, it's going to be quite hectic, as any anyway, with uh, with a sprint weekend. But then, of course, we haven't been there for a while, so uh, yeah, only one practice session to to really get into it again. So I think it will be quite interesting. Congratulations, mate! Well done. Thank you. Well, simply lovely once again for Max Verstappen winning in the spring in Japan with Suzuka. What a result for them. And they can, uh, they further can, uh, have their lead of the Constructors' Championship and the Drivers' Championship. So a good weekend for Red Bull. As we say, we go to China in two weeks' time. Make sure you join us for that. We do a podcast as well. You can download that. Listen on BBC Radio Sounds. This has been an IMG production for BBC Radio 5 Live. Up next is Casa and Fliss with Sunday Breakfast. Thank you very much, Jenny. Yes, good morning, Sunday Breakfast with Flissana. Hello, how are Hello, you? Hello, good morning.